So guys how are you I hope you nice and fine what if Naruto had a Ino and Shikamaru Jasmine of Pearl movie. Two twins were born on September 29th to the Yamanaka clan. Here you go, the nurse said with a smile, giving the small bundle to her father. Inoichi glanced down at his daughter and felt his heart soften, a tiny, defenseless face with curly light blonde hair and innocent blue eyes, looked back at him trustingly. Here? His wife called and he grinned, looking back up, Yamanaka Hinako looked exhausted, but satisfied, holding the older girl in her arms, she smiled happily at him, what shall we name them? Hmm, he thought for a moment before glancing down at his younger daughter, grin widening. I think this one, Inoichi lightly taped his daughter's nose, will be Yamanaka Inori, or Ria for short, and that one, he glanced at the older baby, will be Yamanaka Ino, and going with family tradition. Inako laughed softly and beamed at her babies, well then, Ino and Ria, welcome to this world. Order. The twins were vastly different, that was easy to tell, even though the girls were but toddlers. Ino was loud and demanding, outspoken and brash, she cried loudly when she didn't get what she wanted, imperiously ordered her parents around to their amusement. Ria was quiet and gentle, soft-spoken and shy, she accepted disagreements without arguing in the slightest, did what her parents requested obediently. It was also plainly obvious that the two girls adored each other, Ino stood up for her younger sister when she could, and Ria comforted her older sister when she was upset, Ino never tried to order her sister around, and Ria followed after her sister like a little chick. Their parents were quite amused. What do you think, dear? Hinako asked her husband curiously, watching the girls gather flowers from the backyard with a soft, fond smile. Ria definitely has a passive personality, the former head of the T&I division said, Eno's far more aggressive. That's not bad though, is it? She fretted. No, no, Inoichi reassured her, it's not bad, that's simply their inherent personalities, he paused for a moment, trying to put it into terms his wife would understand, if Eno's a blunt candid love like a bush clover, then Ria's a gentle and sweet love like a jasmine flower. Mama. Ino ran up to them, a bundle of flowers in her hands and Rhea following in her footsteps, look, look. Anako laughed and bent down to smell the flowers, that's very good, sweetie. Rhea toddled up to her papa and looked at him with wide blue eyes, holding up her hands in the universal pick-me-up gesture. The Noichi chuckled and obliged her, setting her down on his knee, hello, little Jasmine, he said, brushing a blonde ringlet off his daughter's face. She giggled, face bright with an innocence that he wished she could keep forever. Bully. Come on, come on, Rhea. Eno called, pulling enthusiastically on her twin's hand, her light purple dress fluttering around her. Rhea laughed softly and went along indulgently, im coming, im coming. The girls had turned four a month ago and had only just been allowed to go outside without parental supervision, most parents didn't worry about things like that it was a ninja village, after all, but Inoichi was protective, it had taken both his wife's persuasion and his daughter's puppy dog eyes that had made him cave. If she was honest with herself, Rhea didn't really want to go out in the village by herself, there were so many unfamiliar people, and everything was always so loud, but Eno loved it, and so Rhea had gone along with it. Rhea loved her sister, she knew her sister loved her, too. That morning, Mama had led them through their morning stretches, for flexibility, she had told them gave them their daily lesson on flowers, and let them off with a smile and a gentle warning. This way, this way. Eno chanted, weaving effortlessly through the crowds. She smiled, doing her best to keep up with her twin, a few minutes later, Rhea found herself in front of a tall building, where there was a large gathering of kids that was dividing themselves into two different groups. Rhea bit her lip, automatically shrinking behind Eno, she didn't like large crowds, and she liked unfamiliar kids even less. Eno patted her on the shoulder comfortingly and proceeded to walk up to the other kids confidently, Rhea following her like her shadow, hey, guys. She said boldly. One of the girls looked up and recognized her, Eno-chan. She smiled happily at the blonde girl, Eno went out with Mama in the village far more than Rhea did. Eno. Eno-chan. Hey. Various greetings were called out from the crowd, and Rhea grimaced, wishing she could sink into the floor, she knew her twin was popular, but she didn't know she was this popular, she wasn't like Eno, wasn't as pretty and brave and confident, she was just quiet Rhea who liked to play with flowers. Taking no notice of her twin's anxiety, Eno forcibly pulled Rhea beside her, saying, Guys, this is my twin sister, Rhea, say hi. Hey, Rhea-chan. Hello. Hi. To her relief, it seemed like the kids liked Eno enough that they accepted her without too much fanfare, someone else wasn't that fortunate. We're going to be playing ninja. The lead kid with the hat said, but not you. He pointed at a kid with swirls on his cheeks. I'm not going to let you play ninja. He declared. The kid looked hurt, why? He asked plaintively. Rhea cringed, she didn't like this, she didn't want to watch this. This was painful. Because if you play, we're going to lose. The lead kid said. They are too slow, another kid added. 
The outcast lowered his head sadly, and Rhea felt like giving him a hug, she glanced at Eno to see her watching the scene apathetically, what would she do? She didn't want the other boy to feel sad, but she didn't want the other kids to hate her either. But then, the teams will not be even, a kid with his hair tied up reminded them, and Rhea felt a flash of hope, maybe she won't have to do anything after all, in Shogi, the game isn't interesting, unless you have the same number of pieces. The outcast looked up, eyes hopeful, she felt like cheering, but abruptly had her good mood dashed by the kid with that hat. Having useless pieces is the same as not having any pieces at all, he said bluntly. That's right, that's right. His sidekick agreed. Rhea winced as the kid with the swirl's face fell again, this wasn't right, but she was terrified of speaking up and having everyone look at her. We have less people, so no complaints, okay. Let's start, the kid with the hat put his hands on his hips. If you guys are happy with it, that's fine, one of the boys from the other team said. Alright, it's decided. He held up a fist. We're going to win. His friend chimed in. Rhea felt her heart drop to her feet as she watched the boy with the swirls walk away desolately, how could the other kids be so cruel? As she watched, he gently freed a butterfly from a spiderweb, he was so nice, and the others were so mean. Why did those boys have to be such bullies? She wanted to run after the boy and tell him that he should listen to the others, but that would make her an outcast too, right? Was it worth it? She wouldn't have any friends and the other kids would shun her, but that was the right thing to do, wasn't it? Before Rhea could decide, Eno had already taken her hand and pulled them into a group, come on, Rhea. She said brightly, we're going to win this. Why yeah, she tried to smile back at her twin, we are. But the boy with the swirls still bothered her. Rooftop. Two games later and Rhea quietly slipped away from the group, telling Eno she wanted to rest for a bit, she had seen the boy with the tied up hair head towards the building, and she was fairly certain the boy with the swirls had walked towards there too. She wanted to check if he was okay, if he was still hurting, Rhea didn't like it when other people were hurting. She didn't find the boys in the building, but she did find some stairs, shrugging to herself, Rhea walked up the steps and found herself on a rooftop, glancing around, she found the two boys and a man that looked like the boy with the swirl's father sitting on a bench, staring at her. Rhea smiled timidly and walked closer, looking closer at the boys, they sat side by side, and the one with the swirls was eating and sharing his potato chips, from the look of things. I saw what happened outside, she said hesitantly, are you alright? He blinked at her, looking surprised why yes, I'm fine. Oh, good, Rhea breathed a sigh of relief, please forgive me, she bowed quickly, her blonde curls flying everywhere for a long moment. Both boys looked stumped, the one with his dark hair tied up asked, why? You didn't do anything. I know, she bit her lip, feeling really guilty, and I'm sorry. I wanted to say something, but I'm knew so. It's okay, the boy with a swirl smiled kindly at her, I won't have done anything either. Rhea beamed, thank you so much. You're alright, though. She didn't want the boy to lie. I'm okay now, he said, I'm Choji, Akimichi Choji. Nara Shikamaru, the boy with dark hair introduced himself lazily. I'm Yamanaka Rhea, she said, feeling a tad shy, it's nice to meet you. Rhea, is it? Chaja's father spoke up, getting to his feet, she blinked at him, surprised, Yara daughter, right? Um, yes. It came out sounding more like a question than an answer, Chaja's father was a little intimidating, even though she knew he was Papa's friend. He smiled at her, making her feel more at ease, how about you sit here then? He gestured to his seat, I should go talk to my wife. Um, er, Rhea shifted her weight awkwardly, I don't want to intrude, especially since it looked like Choji and Shikamaru were already friends. Oh, it's okay. Choji said immediately, she glanced at Shikamaru who blinked at her and jerked his head towards the seat. Rhea took the seat, still not sure whether it was okay, maybe they were just being polite, they probably didn't really want her here. Chip. Choji offered. Rhea smiled and took the potato chip, it was delicious. And that was how she made her first friends. When Choza told his teammates about the incident later, Shikaku and Inoichi were equally delighted. Friends. Rhea liked Shikamaru and Choji, they were both really nice. Shikamaru was smart, like really, really smart, she figured that out when he taught her the rules of shogi and beat her 100 times out of 100, it was a good thing she wasn't a sore loser, but he was also really, really lazy, he spent most of his time watching the clouds, and most of the time, got her to join him, too. Doji was a caring boy, he always shared his food with her, and he always had food with him, Eno told her in private that he was fat, and that she should probably get him to diet, but Rhea honestly didn't mind his appearance, Choji was Choji, besides, hadn't Choji's papa been the same? She spent the majority of her time with Shikamaru and Choji at the rooftop where they had first talked, Shikamaru would watch the clouds, Choji would eat his chips, and she would gently chat with both of them, if they noticed how shy she could be, they didn't say a word. 
She had been worried that Ino would feel left out, but her twin was okay, she had met a girl named Sakura, and they were fast friends, now, she liked Sakura well enough, but Ria considered Shikamaru and Choji her best friends, they shared the sentiment. The year passed quickly and Ria turned 5 with her friends, then, they were sent to the academy. School. Na, Shikakun, Ria whispered, nudging the boy discreetly with her elbow, they had already spent a year in the academy, and he knew what the consequences for this were. Her lazy friend slept on, ignoring the fact that they were supposed to be paying attention to Sensei's lecture. Shikakun. She whispered louder, jabbing him a bit harder. He snorted and shifted slightly to her exasperation, she was preparing for another attempt when it became too late. Nara Shikamaru. Sensei roared, throwing an eraser across the room with deadly accuracy, the soft material hit Shikamaru hard on the head, and he grunted, eyes snapping open and instinctively sitting upright. Im up, im up, he grumbled, from where she was sandwiched between him and Choji, Ria sighed and shook her head. A vein pulsed in Sensei's forehead, detention. Choji chuckled and ate another potato chip. And don't think I don't see you, Akamichi Choji. Detention for you too. Ria sighed once more as Jaja's face fell. Abduction. One day, her papa came back home with a grim face, dressed in his shinobi attire, Ria was instantly worried, normally papa didn't do ninja stuff, much. Papa? She questioned, walking up to him and tilting her head all the way back to see his face, her papa was really tall, are you okay? Anoichi gave a strained smile, but picked up his youngest daughter, holding her at his hip, come along, little Jasmine, he said fondly, walking over to the kitchen, I have to talk to your sister, too. Oh, Rhea frowned, small hands patting at his broad shoulders, did something happen? How about you call your sister? He sat down in his chair, placing her on the ground, it'll tell you both. She bit her lip, but ran off obligingly, Rhea knew where her sister was, she always knew where her sister was, well, usually, zooming into their room, she skidded to a halt. Ino looked up from where she was brushing her still wet hair, blue eyes wide, Rhea. Come on, Rhea tugged lightly at her sister's sleeve, Papa wants to talk to us. Ino frowned, but jumped off her chair and followed her sister in running all the way back to the kitchen, by the time they fought to come to a stop in front of Inoichi, pinwheeling their arms for balance, the twins were both out of breath. Papa chuckled, face relaxing at last, picking them up, he settled them on the table in front of him, so that their legs dangled off the edge. Mama's going to be angry with us later, Ino pointed out, starting to swing her legs freely. Oh, Rhea shifted uneasily, keeping herself still and away from all the pretty plates. Anoichi smiled faintly, I think she'll forgive us this one time, he reassured them, now, girls, I need you to listen to me closely, okay? His face turned serious again, and the twins exchanged a worried look, they had never seen their papa act like this. We're listening, they chorused. Good, yesterday night, the Hyuga heiress was almost abducted, he told them solemnly. Ino scrunched up her forehead, abducted. Like, like kidnapped, Rhea, who read far more books than her sister ever bothered with, was horrified. Anoichi nodded grimly, a deep frown causing wrinkles on his face that Rhea wanted to wipe away, that's right, she was almost kidnapped. Ino gasped, that's horrible. They didn't get away with it, did they? No, no, Papa shook his head, but that doesn't make it any worse, I know you girls think that I'm overprotective, and maybe I am, but I want you both to be careful, alright. Kanoha is safe, but there is still some danger lurking out there. You, you don't think that we might, Rhea trailed off, starting to shiver, Ino instinctively scooted closer, wrapping her sister in a hug. Inoichi hesitated, you're both my daughters, he said at last, and while the Yamanaka clan isn't as wide known as the Hyuga clan, there might, might be bad guys who want to use the power of our mind jutsu. But they can't take away Rhea-chan. Ino declared shrilly at once, tears starting to appear in her blue eyes. Of course not, Papa said soothingly, which is why I want you girls to be careful and look out for each other, okay? Ino and Rhea glanced at each other, an unspoken promise flying between them, I won't ever let anyone hurt you, they promised each other silently. Okay. Memorable. Why do you guys go on doing this? Rhea asked later, sounding mildly exasperated. Shikamaru glanced at her, covering a yawn, as always, they were on their rooftop, and the boys were doing what they did best. Cloud watching and eating, she was rearranging a few flowers that he knew she had grown herself into different arrangements in a crystal bowl. Were it any other girl with that tone in her voice, he would have been a tad disturbed and readying himself for a temper tantrum, but he had known her for two years, and in that time, she had yet to lose her temper, once. Doing what? He asked, Choji crunched another potato chip. She gifted him with a reproachful look, placing the bright red poppy next to the small daisies, you know full well what I'm talking about, Shikakun. He smiled, amused by the little nickname that only she called him by, the sleeping and eating in class. Yes, she frowned a bit at her bowl and shifted the bamboo, why? Shikamaru shrugged, why not? 
Sleeping is much nicer than hearing our sensei babble on and on. Shika kun. Rhea gasped at the disrespect, throwing a blade of grass at him half heatedly. He dodged it easily, what? It's true, Choji, back me up here. He is a little boring, Choji ventured hesitantly. See? She shook her head at them, evidently giving up that topic is a lost cause, if you say so. Shikamaru smirked and redirected his attention to the clouds, Rhea simply didn't have the heart to debate heavily, it was one of the two reasons why she rarely won arguments, the other was that she just didn't like conflict, no matter that she was training to be a Kinwaichi. Next time. Rhea smiled happily as she listened to Suzum sensei teach them the finer arts of flower gathering and undercover work, Kinoichi classes were her favorite out of all of the classes she took, she actually thought she might be able to use the information one day. Now, pair up and go on. Suzum sensei said. Uh oh, she glanced around and saw that Ino had already paired up with Sakura, as she had expected, her twin shot her an apologetic look, but she just smiled and turned her attention to the rest of the girls. She didn't begrudge Ino's friendship with Sakura, she loved to spend time with Shikamaru and Choji, too, but she didn't like trying to approach strangers, it made her uncomfortable. Glancing around, she noted that most of the other girls had already paired up, her eyes caught on a girl standing off to the side with pretty dark blue hair and lavender white eyes, poking her fingers together. Rhea hesitantly walked up to the Hayuga, as she recognized the girl as, inwardly preparing herself for rejection, it'll be okay, she told herself, it won't be the end of the world, besides, she's a Hayuga, so she probably expects the most, and I'm not exactly number one, Rhea knew she was average, at best. Hey, she said, and then promptly berated herself when she realized that it had come out as a squeak. The girl glanced up, looking surprised and hopeful, cheered on by the good signs, Rhea managed to smile at her, my name is Yamanaka Rhea, would you like to be my partner? She held out her hand and held her breath. The girl stared at her hand, eyes wide, before taking it, smiling back timidly, H hello, R Rhea Chan, and my end name is H Hayuga Hinata. Rhea blinked, not sure about the other girl's stuttering, she was fairly certain that most Hayugas weren't that meek, but she didn't mind, it made Hinata more likable, in her humble opinion. And, wasn't Hinata Hayuga the Hayuga heiress? She was pretty sure she was, Rhea bit her lip, reminded of the time her papa had come home with such an upset expression, to get abducted by enemy shinobi, she couldn't imagine the horror, Hinata must be really strong, she decided, no matter her stuttering. Well, then, Hinata-chan, let's go and get some flowers, na. H hi. And Rhea became friends with Hinata. Hinata was nice, practically as nice as Choji, to Rhea's quiet surprise, she had thought, in the back of her mind, that most Hayugas were proud and arrogant, but once she realized that, she had hurriedly stomped on that notion, horrified, Papa certainly hadn't raised her to be prejudiced. To her concern, her new friend was also pretty lacking in self-confidence, Rhea knew that she was rather demure and shy, but she wasn't lacking in confidence, Ino had made sure of that, she silently vowed to boost Hinata's self-confidence, it was her job as a friend. Hinata's crush on Naruto came as a shock, eventually though, she came to accept it, it was great amusement, so long as it didn't embarrass the other girl. Hatred. Uzumaki Naruto, Rhea didn't really what to feel about him. He was so loud, always shouting and running and bouncing and screaming, and he wore bright orange, too, in this, Rhea agreed with Ino, it was a terrible terrible outfit that Naruto wore, plus, what was with his goggles. Then, there were his pranks, Rhea was relieved to be able to say that she, personally, had never been one of his victims, but that was probably only because she was so quiet Naruto never really noticed her, sorta like Hinata, still, just watching the aftermaths of his pranks was scary enough. Iruka sensei covered in the colors of the rainbow, face going crimson, and head mysteriously expanding to a monster size to better yell at the blonde rolling on the floor in laughter, was scarier. And yet. Rhea frowned thoughtfully when she caught Naruto sitting on a swing in the playground all by himself again, he was almost always there after school was over, when everyone else was rushing home with their parents or older siblings. She hadn't noticed him this much before, but after learning of Hinata's crush. Na papa. Rhea patted her daddy's knee to get his attention. Inoichi smiled tenderly at his baby girl, yes Rhea. Is Naruto an orphan? Rhea didn't like to think of being an orphan, she loved her mama and papa, and she could to imagine what her life would be without them, but she had never seen Naruto's parents even once. The weird look crossed her papa's face, yes, little Jasmine, has an orphan. Is that why everyone doesn't like him? Why do you think everyone doesn't like him? Papa questioned, speaking slowly. She blinked, well, a lot of the teachers at school pick on him all the time, and a lot of the civilian kids ignore him, and now that she thought about it, that must be really painful. Rhea instantly felt guilty for never noticing before. Rhea, why are you focusing on Naruto? Ino frowned, tossing back her hair, he's so annoying. Ah, Rhea shrugged, making shapes in the dirt with the tip of her shoe, just curious, I guess. 
Well, you shouldn't worry about it, her sister said confidently, come on, let's go get pudding. Okay, Ria agreed, but inwardly resolved to talk to Shikamaru about it later, he was smart, he would probably know, besides, her papa looked suspiciously relieved, even as he caved into Ino's demands and pleas for dessert, so something was probably going on. Naruto. Shikamaru frowned when she asked about it two days later while they were on their rooftop, what about him? That's nice, Choji said, munching on his chips. Ria bit her lip, blue eyes conflicted, do, do you know why everyone seems to hate him? She didn't understand it, couldn't understand it, Rhea had never hated anyone in her life. Shikamaru looked thoughtful, you know, I asked my old man about that once, he revealed with a yawn. She blinked, what did he say? Rhea had met Shikaku once or twice, and had come out of each encounter with the impression that the Nara head was even smarter than Shika, well, until he got more experience, that is. He said I should just make up my own mind about things, Shikamaru said, troublesome. Rhea frowned, fidgeting with a helenium nervously, my papa won't answer me either, it's not, it's not some big secret, is it? She wasn't sure she liked secrets, they seemed bad. If you want, I can talk to my dad about it, Choji said. Nah, Shikamaru flapped a hand dismissively, it's too troublesome, Rhea, don't go poking into those things. Do you think I might get into TR trouble? Oh, Rhea winced, her stutter always came out when she was feeling nervous, but getting into trouble was really, really bad, her mama had said so. He shrugged lazily, maybe, just keep yourself out of it. Ah, oh okay, Rhea shifted uneasily, um, do you think Naruto's lonely? Because that sounded utterly terrible. Shikamaru groaned, you are not thinking of trying to be friends with him, are you? Rhea stared sullenly at the ground, she didn't disagree. Shikamaru sighed, what a drag, look, Rhea, Naruto is even more troublesome than Ino, leave him to Sasuke or something. Ino's not troublesome, Rhea defended loyally. Yeah, yeah, Shikamaru covered a yawn, directing a half-hearted glare at the blonde, he knew his friend's temperament, and he knew Naruto's temperament, the Yuzumaki would completely steamroll Rhea, and not even notice, it was a terrible matchup. You, you really think Sasuke is enough? The, they seem pretty close to me, Choji said, reaching into his bag and holding out a potato chip comfortingly, chip. Thanks, Choji-kun. Nair it'll be fine, stop fussing, Shikamaru stared dreamily at the clouds, now if he could only take a nap right about now. If you say so, Rhea said hesitantly, regardless, she resolved to herself that even if she wasn't going to be Naruto's friend, she was going to be nice to him, because no one deserved to be treated meanly, like those bullies had done to Choji. Ah, but not too nice, less than not to think Rhea liked Naruto, too. Maybe she simply won't talk to him. But, oh, wasn't that the same as being mean? Rhea sighed, shoulders slumping, as usual, Shika was right, this really was troublesome. Mind. All right, girls, Inoichi said after leading them to an empty training ground, we're going to be going over the mind-body switch technique. Yes. Ino beamed, thrusting her fists in the air, finally. I thought we were going to have to wait forever. Rhea giggled at her sister's enthusiasm, but was just as excited, they were going to learn their clan secret technique. Papa smiled at them, calm down now, now, the mind-body switch technique sends your mind as spiritual energy into a target's body, taking over the target's mind with your own, you will learn the exact same technique, but I do believe you two will develop different approaches to utilizing this technique. They exchanged a look, what do you mean, Papa? Eno asked. Your personalities are different, Eno, he explained, and that's going to affect how you are going to perform this jutsu, Eno, you will most likely do what comes most easy to us, take over the mind in one blow through sheer force, it'll happen in seconds, suppressing the target's mind through utter strength. Rhea frowned, a little concerned, and me, Papa. He patted her head reassuringly, you, Rhea, will most likely take over your target's mind inch by inch, do it so slow that they don't even know that you are there until it's too late, when you are done, it's quite possible that the target won't ever be able to break out of your control, no matter the circumstances. Ino and Rhea glanced at each other, taking in that information, which way is the best, Papa? Ino wanted to know. Inoichi shook his head, both are powerful in their own right, in combat, it is a valuable skill to be able to quickly and efficiently take over your enemy's mind, sometimes, speed is the most critical element to success, however, if the enemy has a strong will, it is possible for that enemy to break out of the jutsu. In stealth or espionage missions, it is important for you to be able to take over your target's mind without anyone noticing otherwise, but that pause may be lethal in a battle, he continued evenly, still, when it comes to searching the mind for information, being meticulous is more important than being quick. They took a moment to digest that, he waited patiently, he wanted his girls to understand this was an important part of what they needed to know and then. So, can we get started now? Eno asked impatiently, clearly not having wasted a moment of time on his explanation. Rhea said nothing, but she seemed to be sharing her sister's point of view. 
Inoichi sighed and started to guide his precious daughters through the steps of the infamous Yamanaka Jutsu. Crush. Rhea seriously did not know what to think when her twin sister announced her obsession on Ichiha Sasuke for the world to hear. On one hand, she was happy that her sister was actively pursuing her interest, Ino was certainly happy, and if her twin was happy, Rhea was happy. On the other hand, she was rather mortified for her sister, she would never have been able to say what Ino did, at that same time, she was also proud Ino was brave enough to do so. Then, there was the fact that she barely knew anything about Ichiha Sasuke, and she wasn't sure she wanted her sister to be fixated on a mysterious boy, sadly, Shikamaru and Choji hadn't been of much help. Troublesome, Shika had muttered, Hess the youngest son of Ichiha Fugaku, the head of the Ichiha clan, and Sakura's also interested in him. Upon learning that little tidbit of information, Rhea had come to the conclusion that Ino's sudden obsession probably had roots in her relationship with Sakura. As pretty good in Tojutsu, Choji had offered, little cold but sort of nice, coming from kind friendly Choji, that wasn't saying much. Somehow, Rhea had the feeling that Ino's crush wouldn't turn out well, but she said nothing and let things be, it was Ino's decision. She was none too happy when her guess turned out to be true, Ino rushed home one day, tears in her eyes, and flung herself into her twin's arms, sobbing openly, she had told Rhea that she would be staying after school with Sakura, so why? Ino. Rhea whispered, confused and upset, it had been a long time since she had seen Ino cry, and she didn't like it, dragging her twin up to their room, she hugged her tight, whispering soothingly in her ear. When Ino's tears had been reduced to the occasional hiccup, Rhea pulled back to look at her red face, Ino, what happened? She asked, deeply worried. But Sakura, Ino said, her identical blue eyes pained, she doesn't want to be friends with me anymore. Rhea blinked, from what she had observed, Ino and Sakura were had been best friends, she didn't understand this. Why? She questioned. Because of Sasuke-kun, Ino spat out, she likes him, too, and she said that because we both like him, we can't be friends anymore. Oh, she winced, there was truly nothing she could do about that, biting her lip, Rhea just held her sister comfortingly, while she spilled out how the whole situation with Sakura went. I would have let Sasu kun go. Ino cried, but did she ask? No. She just decided to make the stupid decision all by herself. Rhea said nothing, but rubbed small circles on Ino's back, she didn't blame Sakura, it was her choice, but she didn't think they would become friends anytime soon, she couldn't be friends with someone who had made her twin cry like this. Placements. Shikakun. Rhea questioned one spring afternoon, gently stroking the petals of a particularly magnificent rose. What is it? He asked without taking his eyes off of the sky. Why don't you put in more of an effort in the academy? Both of them were lying on the grass of a hill, the sun warming them up nicely, Choji had left a couple of minutes ago, and soon they would be splitting up as well, the sun was starting its descent down the horizon. For all her gentle fussing, Rhea had never been able to understand why Shikamaru waved off his grade so easily, and she knew he was, he was far too smart for it to have been anything but deliberate, she knew that, he could probably ace all his tests easily. For her, it was instinct to put everything she had into whatever it was that she was doing, that didn't mean she wasn't aware of her grades, though, in the class, she had a relatively high score, but she made sure it was beneath Sasuke, Sakura and Inos. She had no desire to be in the middle of that problem. On the other hand, Shikamaru had one of the lowest grades in the class, while Chaja's grade was average, what she didn't understand was the reason behind it, they weren't, in any way, dumb, not even close, to be honest. Troublesome, he grumbled, in the end, it doesn't matter. She blinked, it doesn't matter. What did he mean? Weren't grades really important? Not really, Shikamaru covered a yawn, no matter what my scores are, it'll still be placed on a team with Choji and Yuorino as the new Ino Shikacho in the end. Oh, she breathed softly, eyes wide, she hadn't forgotten about that just temporarily put it out of her mind, Rhea frowned, eyebrows furrowing. Shika was right, of course, but she couldn't decide whether she was happy or not, if Rhea was placed on a team with Shika and Choji, she would be ecstatic that she was with her best friends, but she would also be concerned for her twin, as Ino would be placed with other genin, genin that might get her twin in trouble. If Ino was placed on a team with Shika and Choji, she would be relieved that they would watch over her twin, but then she would be on a team with strangers, strangers who didn't know her, and would probably expect her to be like her confident bold twin, and Rhea simply wasn't like that, not truly. Hey, Shikamaru opened one eye to peer at her, you shouldn't worry about it, nothing you can do about it, really. Rhea sighed, tugging lightly at a blonde ringlet, she rather envied her sister's straight long hair, since she could never do anything with her determinedly curly hair, MMK, she yawned, eyes fluttering. He rolled his eyes at her, pushing himself up on his arms with a yawn of his own, we should get going, otherwise your dad's going to come and threaten me again. At that, Rhea blinked, she hadn't known that, Papa really threatened you once. 
she asked, getting to her feet and offering Shikamaru a hand, that didn't sound good. He took it, letting her haul him to his feet, shoulders hunched as usual, yeah, it was troublesome. She giggled at the classic Nara answer, blue eyes shining, it was probably okay then, Shika didn't sound very frightened, Rhea didn't want her friend to be afraid of her papa, did you do your homework? Geez, woman, didn't we just have this conversation? Massacre. The years passed in a blur, barely registering with Rhea, first she was six, and then seven, and then eight. Nothing much seemed to happen in the village, to Ino's disappointment and Rhea's delight. While Lino might long for excitement and drama, Rhea was perfectly happy with the peace and calm, the routine bustling of Kanahagakur, this was her home, she didn't want anything to happen to it, not to her home or family or friends. Which, she supposed, was the reason the Achiha massacre was so shocking and terrifying. Rhea stared at her papa with wide, horrified eyes in the kitchen, where he had chosen to break the awful truth to them, they're all dead everyone but Sasuke. Is he alright Ino chimed in, face paler than normal. Yes, Rhea, Ichiha Itachi killed them all, Papa's face was darker than she had ever seen it, even back during the Hyuga abduction incident, as far as I know, Sasuke is fine, Hess in the hospital right now. We have to go visit him. Ino jumped to her feet, blue eyes flashing with determination, Inoichi frowned, would have interfered, but was beaten to it. No, it was Rhea who caught the hem of her twin shirt, pulled lightly. Ino frowned, confused and mildly hurt, why not? He just lost his family, you know, she pointed out softly, I don't think he wants flowers and fruit now. But he might want company. Maybe, but Rhea didn't think so, he had to be positively devastated, how about this? After he comes back to the academy and seems settled in, you can give him some gladioli. Ino didn't look very happy with the proposal, but nodded, Rhea was ordinarily the one who knew how to treat sensitive matters like this the best, after all. Inoichi simply looked over his girls and smiled proudly, they were growing up right before his eyes, a process that was both stunning and sobering to him as a father. Several days later, Rhea bit her lip and fussed over her bowl of white lilies, pink carnations, blue hydrangeas, and colorful chrysanthemums, to her left, Choji munched furiously on a bag of chips, and Shikamaru, as customary, was gazing at the white fluffy clouds above head. It seemed altogether a far too beautiful day mere days after such a tragedy. After what had happened, as was expected, the security in Kanoha had jumped a dozen levels, Papa no longer allowed Ino or Rhea to go out alone or to anyone else's house without telling him, the Nara and Akamichi compounds were still fine, though, but then again, Papa trusted his teammates the most. Mama was upset too, she was busy crafting the beautiful funeral arrangements all the other concerned citizens wanted to display at the funeral and give to Sasuke, the twins had spent a significant amount of time in the flower ship recently, cutting and pruning the flowers, not that Rhea really minded. Rhea heaved her third sigh in the past two minutes, she wished the Ichiha massacre had never, ever happened. Boy, Rhea. She glanced up to see Shikamaru looking at her, dark eyes perceptive in that familiar way, his papa, Shikaku, did the same thing, Choji paused in his munching for the moment, leaving the rooftop strangely silent, Rhea didn't like it. Um. What does a chrysanthemum mean? He asked, completely out of the blue. What? Rhea blinked blankly. What does a chrysanthemum mean? Shikamaru repeated patiently. She frowned slightly in confusion, but said, sympathy, honor. Lily. Innocence and purity. Carnation. Rhea spoke often enough about her adored flowers that Shikamaru, with his vast intellect and gifts of memory, knew of most of them, he didn't care about them like she did, but recognized their significance to her well enough. Pink for affection, white for innocence. Hydrangea. Heartfelt, sincerity, she shook her head, pale blonde ringlets flying in the air, Shikakun, what is this about? He sighed himself, turning his eyes back towards the blue, blue sky, stop worrying about the Achiha massacre, it's a drag. Rhea bit her bottom lip, torn between feeling elated that he had noticed and tried to comfort her, and anxiety as the topic resurfaced in her mind once more, now that the distraction of the flowers were gone, but, an entire clan destroyed in one night, Shikakun. Or and you even a little worried. Why? He said logically, yawning widely, Ichiha Itachi was a one-of-a-kind super genius from what I've heard, there was no one else like him in Kanahagakur, it probably can't happen again. Really? Yeah, Choji smiled at Rhea, shoving a hand into his potato chip bag, you shouldn't worry about it, Rhea-chan. She wavered uncertainly, wanting to believe in her friends, but concerned all the same, do you guys honestly think so? Uh huh, you should just concentrate on making a totally awesome flower arrangement, Choji gave her an enthusiastic thumbs up. Shikamaru only yawned again, eyes closing, sure, now let me sleep. Rhea smiled happily as she listened to Suzum sensei teach them the finer arts of flower gathering and undercover work, Kinoichi classes were her favorite out of all of the classes she took, she actually thought she might be able to use the information one day. Now, pair up and go on. Suzum sensei said. 
Uh-oh. She glanced around and saw that Ino had already paired up with Sakura, as she had expected, her twin shot her an apologetic look, but she just smiled and turned her attention to the rest of the girls. She didn't begrudge Ino's friendship with Sakura, she loved to spend time with Shikamaru and Choji, too, but she didn't like trying to approach strangers, it made her uncomfortable. Glancing around, she noted that most of the other girls had already paired up, her eyes caught on a girl standing off to the side with pretty dark blue hair and lavender white eyes, poking her fingers together. Rhea hesitantly walked up to the Hayuga as she recognized the girl as, inwardly preparing herself for rejection, it'll be okay, she told her, hey, she said, and then promptly berated herself when she realized that it had come out as a squeak. The girl glanced up, looking surprised and hopeful, cheered on by the good signs, Rhea managed to smile at her, my name is Yamanaka Rhea, would you like to be my partner? She held out her hand and held her breath. The girl stared at her hand, eyes wide, before taking it, smiling back timidly, H hello, R Rhea Chan, M my N name is H Hayuga Hinata. Rhea blinked, not sure about the other girl stuttering, she was fairly certain that most Hayugas weren't that meek, but she didn't mind, it made Hinata more likable, in her humble opinion. And, wasn't Hinata Hayuga the Hayuga heiress? She was pretty sure she was, Rhea bit her lip, reminded of the time her papa had come home with such an upset expression, to get abducted by enemy shinobi, she couldn't imagine the horror, Hinata must be really strong, she decided, no matter her stuttering. Well, then, Hinata-chan, let's go and get some flowers, na. H hi. And Rhea became friends with Hinata. Hinata was nice, practically as nice as Choji, to Rhea's quiet surprise, she had thought, in the back of her mind, that most Hayugas were proud and arrogant, but once she realized that, she had hurriedly stomped on that notion, horrified, Papa certainly hadn't raised her to be prejudiced. To her concern, her new friend was also pretty lacking in self-confidence, Rhea knew that she was rather demure and shy, but she wasn't lacking in confidence, Ino had made sure of that, she silently vowed to boost Hinata's self-confidence, it was her job as a friend. Hinata's crush on Naruto came as a shock, eventually though, she came to accept it, it was great amusement, so long as it didn't embarrass the other girl. Hatred. Uzumaki Naruto, Rhea didn't really what to feel about him. He was so loud, always shouting and running and bouncing and screaming, and he wore bright orange, too, in this, Rhea agreed with Ino, it was a terrible terrible outfit that Naruto wore, plus, what was with his goggles. Then, there were his pranks, Rhea was relieved to be able to say that she, personally, had never been one of his victims, but that was probably only because she was so quiet Naruto never really noticed her, sorta like Hinata, still, just watching the aftermath of his pranks was scary enough. Naruka sensei covered in the colors of the rainbow, face going crimson, and head mysteriously expanding to a monster size to better yell at the blonde rolling on the floor in laughter, was scarier. And yet, Rhea frowned thoughtfully when she caught Naruto sitting on a swing in the playground all by himself again, he was almost always there after school was over, when everyone else was rushing home with their parents or older siblings. She hadn't noticed him this much before, but after learning of Hinata's crush. Na papa. Rhea patted her daddy's knee to get his attention. Inoichi smiled tenderly at his baby girl, yes Rhea. Is Naruto an orphan? Rhea didn't like to think of being an orphan, she loved her mama and papa, and she cold imagine what her life would be without them, but she had never seen Naruto's parents even once. A weird look crossed her papa's face, yes, little Jasmine, has an orphan. Is that why everyone doesn't like him? Why do you think everyone doesn't like him? Papa questioned, speaking slowly. She blinked, well, a lot of the teachers at school pick on him all the time, and a lot of the civilian kids ignore him, and now that she thought about it, that must be really painful. Rhea instantly felt guilty for never noticing before. Rhea, why are you focusing on Naruto? Ino frowned, tossing back her hair, he's so annoying. Ah, Rhea shrugged, making shapes in the dirt with the tip of her shoe, just curious, I guess. Well, you shouldn't worry about it, her sister said confidently, come on, let's go get pudding. Okay, Rhea agreed, but inwardly resolved to talk to Shikamaru about it later, he was smart, he would probably know, besides, her papa looked suspiciously relieved, even as he caved into Ino's demands and pleas for dessert, so something was probably going on. Naruto. Shikamaru frowned when she asked about it two days later while they were on their rooftop, what about him? That's nice, Choji said, munching on his chips. Rhea bit her lip, blue eyes conflicted, do, do you know why everyone seems to hate him? She didn't understand it, Cole didn't understand it, Rhea had never hated anyone in her life. Shikamaru looked thoughtful, you know, I asked my old man about that once, he revealed with a yawn. She blinked, what did he say? Rhea had met Shikaku once or twice, and had come out of each encounter with the impression that the Nara head was even smarter than Shika, well, until he got more experience, that is. He said I should just make up my own mind about things, Shikamaru said, troublesome. 
Bria frowned, fidgeting with a helenium nervously, my papa won't answer me either, it's not, it's not some big secret, is it? She wasn't sure she liked secrets, they seemed bad. If you want, I can talk to my dad about it, Joji said. Nah, Shikamaru flapped a hand dismissively, it's too troublesome, Rhea, don't go poking into those things. You think I might get into TR trouble? Oh, Rhea winced, her stutter always came out when she was feeling nervous, but getting into trouble was really, really bad, her mama had said so. He shrugged lazily, maybe, just keep yourself out of it. Ah, oh okay, Rhea shifted uneasily, um, do you think Naruto's lonely? Because that sounded utterly terrible. Shikamaru groaned, you are not thinking of trying to be friends with him, are you? Rhea stared sullenly at the ground, she didn't disagree. Shikamaru sighed, what a drag, look, Rhea, Naruto is even more troublesome than Ino, leave him to Sasuke or something. Ino's not troublesome, Rhea defended loyally. Yeah, yeah, Shikamaru covered a yawn, directing a half-hearted glare at the blonde, he knew his friend's temperament, and he knew Naruto's temperament, the Yuzumaki would completely steamroll Rhea and not even notice, it was a terrible matchup. You, you really think Sasuke is enough? The, they seem pretty close to me, Choji said, reaching into his bag and holding out a potato chip comfortingly, chip. Thanks, Choji-kun. Nair it'll be fine, stop fussing, Shikamaru stared dreamily at the clouds, now if he could only take a nap right about now. If you say so, Rhea said hesitantly, regardless, she resolved to herself that even if she wasn't going to be Naruto's friend, she was going to be nice to him, because no one deserved to be treated meanly, like those bullies had done to Choji. Ah, but not too nice, lest Anata think Rhea like Naruto, too. Maybe she simply won't talk to him. But, oh, wasn't that the same as being mean? Rhea sighed, shoulders slumping, as usual, Shika was right, this really was troublesome. Mind. Alright, girls, Inoichi said after leading them to an empty training ground, we're going to be going over the mind-body switch technique. Yes. Ino beamed, thrusting her fists in the air, finally. I thought we were going to have to wait forever. Rhea giggled at her sister's enthusiasm, but was just as excited, they were going to learn their clan's secret technique. Appa smiled at them, calm down now, now, the mind-body switch technique sends your mind as spiritual energy into a target's body, taking over the target's mind with your own, you will learn the exact same technique, but I do believe you two will develop different approaches to utilizing this technique. They exchanged a look, what do you mean, Papa? Eno asked. Your personalities are different, Eno, he explained, and that's going to affect how you are going to perform this jutsu, Eno, you will most likely do what comes most easy to us, take over the mind in one blow through sheer force, it'll happen in seconds, suppressing the target's mind through utter strength. Rhea frowned, a little concerned, and me, Papa. He patted her head reassuringly, you, Rhea, will most likely take over your target's mind inch by inch, do it so slow that they don't even know that you are there until it's too late, when you are done, it's quite possible that the target won't ever be able to break out of your control, no matter the circumstances. Ino and Rhea glanced at each other, taking in that information, which way is the best, Papa? Ino wanted to know. Inoichi shook his head, both are powerful in their own right, in combat, it is a valuable skill to be able to quickly and efficiently take over your enemy's mind, sometimes, speed is the most critical element to success, however, if the enemy has a strong will, it is possible for that enemy to break out of the jutsu. In stealth or espionage missions, it is important for you to be able to take over your target's mind without anyone noticing otherwise, but that pause may be lethal in a battle, he continued evenly, still, when it comes to searching the mind for information, being meticulous is more important than being quick. They took a moment to digest that, he waited patiently, he wanted his girls to understand this was an important part of what they needed to know and then. So, can we get started now? Eno asked impatiently, clearly not having wasted a moment of time on his explanation. Rhea said nothing, but she seemed to be sharing her sister's point of view. Inoichi sighed and started to guide his precious daughters through the steps of the infamous Yamanaka Jutsu. Crush. Rhea seriously did not know what to think when her twin sister announced her obsession on Ichiha Sasuke for the world to hear. On one hand, she was happy that her sister was actively pursuing her interest, Ino was certainly happy, and if her twin was happy, Rhea was happy. On the other hand, she was rather mortified for her sister, she would never have been able to say what Ino did, at that same time, she was also proud Ino was brave enough to do so. Then, there was the fact that she barely knew anything about Ichiha Sasuke, and she wasn't sure she wanted her sister to be fixated on a mysterious boy, sadly, Shikamaru and Choji hadn't been of much help. Troublesome, Shika had muttered, Hess the youngest son of Ichiha Fugaku, the head of the Ichiha clan, and Sakura is also interested in him. Upon learning that little tidbit of information, Rhea had come to the conclusion that Ino's sudden obsession probably had roots in her relationship with Sakura. 
s pretty good in Tejutsu, Choji had offered, little cold but sorta nice, coming from kind friendly Choji, that wasn't saying much. Somehow, Rhea had the feeling that Ino's crush wouldn't turn out well, but she said nothing and let things be, it was Ino's decision. She was none too happy when her guess turned out to be true, Ino rushed home one day, tears in her eyes, and flung herself into her twin's arms, sobbing openly, she had told Rhea that she would be staying after school with Sakura, so why? Ino? Rhea whispered, confused and upset, it had been a long time since she had seen Ino cry, and she didn't like it, dragging her twin up to their room, she hugged her tight, whispering soothingly in her ear. When Ino's tears had been reduced to the occasional hiccup, Rhea pulled back to look at a red face, Ino, what happened? She asked, deeply worried. It's Akura, Ino said, her identical blue eyes pained, she doesn't want to be friends with me anymore. Rhea blinked, from what she had observed, Ino and Sakura were had been best friends, she didn't understand this. Why? She questioned. Because of Sasuke-kun, Ino spat out, she likes him, too, and she said that because we both like him, we can't be friends anymore. Oh, she winced, there was truly nothing she could do about that, biting her lip, Rhea just held her sister comfortingly, while she spilled out how the whole situation with Sakura went. I would have let Sasuke-kun go. Ino cried, but did she ask? No. She just decided to make the stupid decision all by herself. Rhea said nothing, but rubbed small circles on Ino's back, she didn't blame Sakura, it was her choice, but she didn't think they would become friends anytime soon, she couldn't be friends with someone who had made her twin cry like this. Placements. Shikakun. Rhea questioned one spring afternoon, gently stroking the petals of a particularly magnificent rose. What is it? He asked without taking his eyes off of the sky. Why don't you put in more of an effort in the academy? Both of them were lying on the grass of a hill, the sun warming them up nicely, Choji had left a couple of minutes ago, and soon they would be splitting up as well, the sun was starting its descent down the horizon. For all her gentle fussing, Rhea had never been able to understand why Shikamaru waved off his grade so easily, and she knew he was, he was far too smart for it to have been anything but deliberate, she knew that, he could probably ace all his tests easily. For her, it was instinct to put everything she had into whatever it was that she was doing, that didn't mean she wasn't aware of her grades, though, in the class, she had a relatively high score, but she made sure it was beneath Sasuke, Sakura and Inos. She had no desire to be in the middle of that problem. On the other hand, Shikamaru had one of the lowest grades in the class, while Chaja's grade was average, what she didn't understand was the reason behind it, they weren't, in any way, dumb, not even close, to be honest. Troublesome, he grumbled, in the end, it doesn't matter. She blinked, it doesn't matter. What did he mean? Weren't grades really important? Not really, Shikamaru covered a yawn, no matter what my scores are, it'll still be placed on a team with Choji and Yuorino as the new Ino Shikacho in the end. Oh, she breathed softly, eyes wide, she hadn't forgotten about that just temporarily put it out of her mind, Rhea frowned, eyebrows furrowing. Shika was right, of course, but she couldn't decide whether she was happy or not, if Rhea was placed on a team with Shika and Choji, she would be ecstatic that she was with her best friends, but she would also be concerned for her twin, as Ino would be placed with other genin, genin that might get her twin in trouble. If Ino was placed on a team with Shika and Choji, she would be relieved that they would watch over her twin, but then she would be on a team with strangers, strangers who didn't know her, and would probably expect her to be like her confident bold twin, and Rhea simply wasn't like that, not truly. Hey, Shikamaru opened one eye to peer at her, you shouldn't worry about it, nothing you can do about it, really. Rhea sighed, tugging lightly at a blonde ringlet, she rather envied her sister's straight long hair, since she could never do anything with her determinately curly hair, MMK, she yawned, eyes fluttering. He rolled his eyes at her, pushing himself up on his arms with a yawn of his own, we should get going, otherwise your dad's going to come and threaten me again. At that, Rhea blinked, she hadn't known that, Papa really threatened you once. She asked, getting to her feet and offering Shikamaru a hand, that didn't sound good. He took it, letting her haul him to his feet, shoulders hunched as usual, yeah, it was troublesome. She giggled at the classic Nara answer, blue eyes shining, it was probably okay then, Shika didn't sound very frightened, Rhea didn't want her friend to be afraid of her papa, did you do your homework? Geez, woman, didn't we just have this conversation? Massacre. The years passed in a blur, barely registering with Rhea, first she was six, and then seven, and then eight. Nothing much seemed to happen in the village, to Ino's disappointment and Rhea's delight. While Lino might long for excitement and drama, Rhea was perfectly happy with the peace and calm, the routine bustling of Kanahagakur, this was her home, she didn't want anything to happen to it, not to her home or family or friends. Which, she supposed, was the reason the Achiha massacre was so shocking and terrifying. Rhea stared at her papa with wide, horrified eyes in the kitchen, where he had chosen to break the awful truth to them, they're all dead everyone but Sasuke. 
Is he alright? Ino chimed in, face paler than normal. Yes, Ria, Ichiha Itachi killed them all. Papa's face was darker than she had ever seen it, even back during the Hyuga abduction incident. As far as I know, Sasuke is fine, Hess in the hospital right now. We have to go visit him. Ino jumped to her feet, blue eyes flashing with determination. Inoichi frowned, would have interfered, but was beaten to it. No, it was Ria who caught the hem of her twin's shirt, pulled lightly. Ino frowned, confused and mildly hurt, why not? He just lost his family, Ino, she pointed out softly, I don't think he wants flowers and fruit now. But he might want company. Maybe, but Ria didn't think so, he had to be positively devastated, how about this? After he comes back to the academy and seems settled in, you can give him some gladioli. Ino didn't look very happy with the proposal, but nodded, Ria was ordinarily the one who knew how to treat sensitive matters like this the best, after all. Inoichi simply looked over his girls and smiled proudly, they were growing up right before his eyes, a process that was both stunning and sobering to him as a father. Several days later, Ria bit her lip and fussed over her bowl of white lilies, pink carnations, blue hydrangeas, and colorful chrysanthemums, to her left, Choji munched furiously on a bag of chips, and Shikamaru, as customary, was gazing at the white fluffy clouds above head. It seemed altogether a far too beautiful day mere days after such a tragedy. After what had happened, as was expected, the security in Kanoha had jumped a dozen levels, Papa no longer allowed Ino or Ria to go out alone or to anyone else's house without telling him, the Nara and Akamichi compounds were still fine, though, but then again, Papa trusted his teammates the most. Mama was upset, too, she was busy crafting the beautiful funeral arrangements all the other concerned citizens wanted to display at the funeral and give to Sasuke, the twins had spent a significant amount of time in the flower ship recently, cutting and pruning the flowers, not that Rhea really minded. Rhea heaved her third sigh in the past two minutes, she wished the Ichiha massacre had never, ever happened. Boy, Rhea. She glanced up to see Shikamaru looking at her, dark eyes perceptive in that familiar way, his papa, Shikaku, did the same thing, Choji paused in his munching for the moment, leaving the rooftop strangely silent, Rhea didn't like it. Hmm. What does a chrysanthemum mean? He asked, completely out of the blue. What? Rhea blinked blankly. What does a chrysanthemum mean? Shikamaru repeated patiently. She frowned slightly in confusion, but said, sympathy, honor. Lily. Innocence and purity. Carnation. Rhea spoke often enough about her adored flowers that Shikamaru, with his vast intellect and gifts of memory, knew of most of them, he didn't care about them like she did, but recognized their significance to her well enough. Pink for affection, white for innocence. Hydrangea. Heartfelt, sincerity, she shook her head, pale blonde ringlets flying in the air, Shikakun, what is this about? He sighed himself, turning his eyes back towards the blue, blue sky, stop worrying about the Ichiha massacre, it's a drag. Rhea bit her bottom lip, torn between feeling elated that he had noticed and tried to comfort her, and anxiety as the topic resurfaced in her mind once more, now that the distraction of the flowers were gone, but, an entire clan destroyed in one night, Shikakun. Or aren't you even a little worried? Why? He said logically, yawning widely, Ichiha Itachi was a one-of-a-kind super genius from what I've heard, there was no one else like him in Kanahagakur, it probably can't happen again. Really? Yeah, Choji smiled at Rhea, shoving a hand into his potato chip bag, you shouldn't worry about it, Rhea-chan. She wavered uncertainly, wanting to believe in her friends, but concerned all the same, do you guys honestly think so? Uh huh, you should just concentrate on making a totally awesome flower arrangement, Choji gave her an enthusiastic thumbs up. Chikamaru only yawned again, eyes closing, sure, now let me sleep. The years passed by quickly after that, not much really happened, to Rhea's relief. Sasu came back to the academy soon enough, and if he was cold and aloof before, he was even more so now, Rhea was hesitant about it, but she gave Ino the go-ahead to give the last Ichiha, as they had started calling him, the gladioli a few weeks later. Later, when asked about it, Ino had said that while Sasu had accepted the flowers, he had done so in a really cool and calm way, Rhea took that to mean he hadn't really cared and might even be upset about it, she kept out of his way from there on. Rhea became 9, and then 10, Shed say that it was around that time that the boys realized they were boys, and the girls realized they were girls, they had known before of course, but there was a difference between knowing and knowing, naturally, and to her mild distress, a gulf opened up between them at once. Things changed, a bit. For one, Shikamaru and Choji started to go off with Kiba, Naruto, and Shino from time to time, skipping classes, performing pranks, boy stuff like that, Rhea didn't much like it, but reluctantly accepted that it was their time, and never asked to be bought along. Not that Shikamaru and Choji weren't still her best friends, oh no, they still sat on the rooftop most days after school and talked and napped and ate, if that had been taken away from her, Rhea wouldn't have tolerated that at all, if nothing else, she could always have told Ino. 
Sometimes, Rhea believed Ino could solve anything. Her twin was awesome like that. Her two, since Shikamaru and Choji were spending boy time, Rhea clung to Hinata and Ino for girl time, as she had expected, Ino and Hinata bonded over their shared love of flowers, Ino was always mostly the one talking, but Rhea and Hinata occasionally got in a word or two. For three, Mama started to talk to Ino and Rhea about girl stuff, like puberty and periods and things like that, Rhea wasn't at all sure she liked this once a month bleeding thing, it sounded disgusting and gross and painful, but Mama assured her that she would get used to it. Ino was just excited to start growing up and be beautiful like Mama and grow breasts and be womanly, she had been spending tons of time on her hair and skin recently, too, she had even started obsessing over her weight and watching the amount of food she ate daily. Rhea wasn't sure she wanted that sort of stuff to happen either, but she went along with it for her twin sake, personally, she didn't really care about her looks, her hair was always a mess anyways, but she did occasionally nudge her twin into studying for tests and doing homework. After that, they turned 11 and then 12. And then it was time for graduation. Placement. Okay, Rhea, what's wrong? Ino demanded the night before the final tests, hands on her hips. Rhea bit her lip, squirming nervously on her bed, the twins didn't share a room anymore as they had separated a year ago, but that didn't mean Ino didn't sometimes sleep in Rhea's room, or Rhea didn't sometimes sleep in Ino's room. And nothing, she muttered, picking at her blanket. Ino rolled her eyes, don't nothing me. Yeah I've been upset since we got out of the academy today. Yeah are not worried about the tests, are you? Yeah I've always aced those things. No, I'm not worried about the tests, Rhea took a deep breath, running a hand through her blonde curls, Eno, have you thought about team placements yet? Eno blinked, looking surprised, it appeared that well prepared for many things, her twin hadn't been prepared for this, team placements. Frowning, Eno walked forward and sat on Rhea's bed, blue eyes concerned, you are not stressed about the Eno Shikacho thing, are you? Aren't you? I mean, one of us is obviously going to end up on a team with Shikakun and Choji-kun. Hopefully it's you. Rhea's head snapped up, her eyes wide, I Eno. What? I don't want to be with those idiots. Eno scoffed openly, you can have them, thank you very much. She spluttered helplessly, be boo but then you might be with some strangers. So? It'll probably be better than with Shikamaru and Choji, Eno's face softened at her twins uttering comprehension, smiling reassuringly, besides, they're your best friends, right? All right. So you should have them, Eno said with conviction. They ah, Rhea sweat dropped, I don't think that's how it works. Humph, I don't want those idiots, I want, Sasuke-kun. Heart shined in Ino's eyes, her hands clasped to her chest, while sparkles twirled around her form, her sigh was eloquently passionate. I see, Rhea shook her head and decided to leave her twin to her daydreams, she would never understand her twin's obsession with a chess Sasuke. Test. The next morning, Rhea slid into the seat next to Hinata, tightening her ponytail quickly, good morning, Hinata-chan. Good morning. Hinata smiled shyly at her. Do you think you are ready for this test? H hi. Hinata nodded quickly. That's good, Rhea smiled sweetly, sighing softly, I'm not so sure myself. What a drag, Rhea, you studied for four hours yesterday, Shikamaru craned his head back to look at her, seated a row in front of the two girls, I would know, considering you somehow made me help you, he wasn't entirely sure how she had done it himself. Her smile turned sheepish, why yeah, thanks for that, Shikakun. You are welcome, now stop worrying and let me sleep, he commanded, head dropping to rest on his folded arms in preparation for a nap. Rhea shook her head in exasperation, but obligingly said nothing more. I'm sure y'all do okay, Rhea-chan. Choji grinned at her, eating his chips. You too, Choji-kun, she smiled back, feeling herself relax minutely. Sasu-kun. Shikamaru groaned, bringing his hands up to clamp over his ears, Hinata winced visibly, eyes widening, ah. Rhea glanced at the group of girls circling around the Achiha with some trepidation, noting to her slight discomfort that her twin was among the group, must they do this every day? She questioned softly. Doji shrugged, not bothering to stop eating, guess so. I want to sit next to Sasu Kun today. No, me. Get away from him. I'm going to sit next to Sasu Kun. Like hell. Rhea spared a moment to feel sorry for Sasuke before Iruka-sensei strode into the room, taking in the chaos in a glance, he slammed his hands on his desk, instantly silencing everyone, enough. Everyone, take a seat. Grumbling, the failed fangirls spread out to fling themselves into empty spots, while Lino and Sakura glared at each other over Sasuke's head, Rhea eyed the confrontation warily and shuddered. Alright. As everyone knows, today is the day of the graduation exam. Iruka-sensei announced, once you pass, you will off. Wait. The door flung open with a bang and an orange blur streaked in, complete with goggles and a foxy smile, the great Yuzumaki Naruto is here. Did you miss me? The vein throbbed in Aruka-sensei's temple, Naruto. Yar late. He roared loudly. 
Rhea cringed back despite herself, wondering if their sensei would chose to give all of them an impromptu henge test again, he had done that yesterday, when Naruto had pulled another one of his pranks. Vandalizing the Hokage's mountain. Haha, <laughs> not looking the least apologetic, Naruto laced his fingers behind his head, I overslept again. Iruka sensei sighed heavily and seemed to count down from 10 inside his head, sit now, he commanded, pointing a finger at an empty seat, Naruto obeyed sulkily. Now, as I was saying Iruka sensei directed a glare at Naruto once you pass, you will officially be a genin of Kanahakure, so do your best. We're going to start off for the moment with a written test. Graduation. The graduate, Yao'll have to the bunch and no jutsu when Yao are called to come to the next room, Iruka sensei told them three hours later, listen for your name. It was alphabetical, so Ria let herself relax, Yamanaka was pretty much going to be at the end, after all. They all know, did why you think that you did okay in the tests? Hinata asked timidly. Ria smiled faintly, yeah, you? She nodded, pressing her fingers together, I think I did well. Um, what team do you want to be on? Ria asked quietly. To her surprise, Hinata blushed bright red and looked down at her table, when she sneaked a glance at a certain blonde though, she understood. Ah, I see, Rhea smiled gently, I hope it works out. If possible, Hinata seemed to go ever redder, h high. Both girls paused for a second to hear Sakura's name being called. Wh what team do why you want to be oh on? Hinata asked. That that, Rhea looked thoughtful, it'd like to be on a team with Shika-kun and Choji-kun, she said at last, but I don't want Ino to be on a team with strangers, so. Oh, I I understand, Hinata jumped a little when her name was called, I ha have to go, Rhea-chan. Good luck, Rhea smiled encouragingly. Not much later, her own name came up, after Eno's of course, biting her lip, Rhea got to her feet and stepped lightly into the next room. Ready? Haruka smiled reassuringly at her, rows of forehead protectors lying on the desk in front of him. Rhea took a deep breath, y'all be fine, she counseled herself, ready. Go. Closing her eyes, Rhea found her center, as Papa and Mama had repeatedly taught her, reaching for that familiar chakra, she moved her fingers through the hand seals, bunch and no jutsu. A small poof of smoke to her left and right, and she opened her eyes to blink at two clones of herself that had just appeared, the clones blinked back at her before smiling proud smiles that Rhea only really saw in the mirror, and disappearing in double poofs of smoke. Congratulations, Rhea, Iruka sensei's smile was warm, proud, this is now yours, he held up a leaf forehead protector that she took carefully into her hands. You are now a genin of the leaf village, he said to her, do your village proud. Rhea bowed her head respectfully, of course. Celebration. Look at you two, my baby girls have certainly grown up, Inoichi grinned proudly at his twins. Rhea smiled back while Ino rolled her eyes, Papa. We're not babies anymore. Of course not, Ino, Hanako smiled graciously, nudging her husband's leg with her foot underneath the table warningly, but I do think this calls for a celebration. A celebration Ino's eyes lit up, party girl that she was. On the other hand, Rhea's smile dimmed a bit, a celebration. Mama's smile was knowing, when it came time for their birthday parties, the reaction of the twins had been ever constant, Ino would be the center of the party, basking in the attention of various children gleefully, Rhea would be in the corner, chatting with Shikamaru, Choji, and occasionally Hinata, when he ashi allowed it. The celebration, she repeated, just for our family. Both girls looked skeptical, but didn't argue, it had been a while since their last family occasion, after all. Present. Before dinner was served, Inoichi gestured for the girls to take a seat, Ino, Rhea, I have a present for you too. The present. They repeated in unison curiously. He smiled, placing his hands on the table, they were closed, evidently holding something, here, Inoichi opened his hands to reveal two silver hoop earrings in each hand, ones that the twins recognized immediately. They exchanged a glance. Papa, Ino murmured. I split my old earrings, he said to them, so y'all both have one, and one new earring, of course, for the new generation. Surprisingly, it was Rhea that reacted first, she took the ones on her papa's left hand with a sincere, thank you, papa. Thank you, papa, Ino echoed, taking the ones on papa's right hand. Inoichi's smile was tender, y'all always be my baby girls, don't forget. This time, Ino didn't protest. Inoichi. Later that night, after a delicious dinner by mama with a beautiful bouquet by papa, Rhea stood in front of her floor-length mirror and stared at the girl who stared back at her. She had large blue eyes the exact same color as her twin and father, framed with pale blonde ringlets that touched the middle of her back when left unbound, thanks to Eno's constant reminders on diet and weight, the girl was relatively skinny, though not nearly to the extent of her twin, her small hoop earrings glinted silver in the faint light. 
The girl in the mirror wore a semi-sheer, long-sleeved white shirt over a long white skirt, with an organdy layer of lace flowers and two side slits that revealed the fishnet shorts underneath, the shinobi boots over her feet, weapons pouch strapped to her right thigh, and forehead protector serving as a belt, pronounced her a kinoichi. The kinoichi. Rhea really was a kinoichi now. She sighed, tracing the leaf insignia on the metal of her forehead protector, she guessed she should be happy about this, but having the former head of the torture and interrogation department as a papa meant that Rhea didn't get to be as naive about the ninja life like some other genin. Well, Rhea reasoned, throwing herself onto her bed with a bounce or two, so long as I have Shikakan and Choji-kun and Hinata-chan and Ino. They'll be fine. Decisions. Little did Rhea know that right at that point in time, the former Ino Shikacho were gathered in the Hokage's office, ready to make a decision that would shape how the rest of her life would turn out. Inoichi, Shikaku, Choza, the Hokage greeted evenly, fingers intertwined, I've asked each of you to come here tonight to discuss team placements. Shikaku sighed, this is about Inoichi's little girls, isn't it? Troublesome. The Hokage chuckled, yes, indeed, Ino Shikacho is tradition, but we now have two girls from the Yamanaka clan, Inoichi, thoughts. Inoichi sighed, face set in a deep frown, they both have their merits, he said, Ino's style of attack is best suited for the Ino Shikacho, since she's a good 10 seconds ahead of Rhea in taking over an opponent's mind, however, Rhea, from what I know, is close friends already with Shikamaru and Choji. That's true, Choza spoke up, nodding, I know Choji gets along very well with little Rhea. Shikamaru also likes her, Shikaku said, but it's possible that because Rhea is so mild, that Ino Shikacho won't get anywhere without a good kick in the behind from an outside source. That's true, Inoichi smirked, I seem to remember me doing most of the work back in our genin days. They yelled at us until we got moving, Shikaku deadpanned. Same thing. Toza laughed, that's because Shikaku would spend all his time napping, and I would spend all my time eating. Exactly, if it wasn't for me, our team would never have done anything, Inoichi said self-righteously. So, this is a competition between efficiency and harmony, the sand aim said with a small smile, cutting straight to the heart of the matter. Hi, Hokage-sama, Shikaku said, if it's Ino, they may be better at formations, but their teamwork will be somewhat strained, if it's Rhea, they may struggle a little in combat, but their teamwork will be damn near flawless. The Hokage took a puff of his pipe, blowing out a breath of smoke slowly, has it always been like this? Toza shrugged, I believe it developed like this, Hokage-sama, at the start, both Ino and Rhea came over to the Akamichi compound to play with Choji, along with Shikamaru, slowly, however, Ino started to drift away to mingle along other students at the academy, Rhea still comes by regularly, though. In that case, it'll leave the decision up to your three, Suratobi said, who do you think would fit best? If I may, Hokage-sama, who will be the Jonin instructor? Inoichi asked. Asuma. Ah, the three traded looks, they all knew of the Hokage's strained relationship with his son. What do you think, Inoichi? Shikaku stuffed his hands in his pockets, they're your daughters. He hesitated, I want to say Arya, I know her best friends are Shikamaru and Choji. But. Choza prompted. I don't want Ino to end up with some strangers I've never met, Inoichi admitted. Actually, Saratobi said, you don't have to worry about that. Inoichi blinked, huh? Memorial. The very next morning, Rhea woke up to her papa gently shaking her, hm, wah. Inoichi smiled mildly, come on, get up, Rhea, I want to take you and Ino somewhere. Oh, yawning, Rhea rubbed at her eye with a fist, mmk. Ten minutes later though, and she wasn't feeling the least bit sleepy anymore, with wide blue eyes, Rhea stared up at the large rounded stone that loomed over her, three familiar clan symbols carved at the top, two stone pillars stood guard beside it, tall and proud. This was... The Yamanaka, Nara, and Akamichi clan memorial, her papa's smile was wistful, he turned to face them, blonde hair blowing gently in the wind, there was a seriousness in his eyes that Rhea wasn't sure she liked. Ino, Rhea, you are now officially genin of Kanahagakur, Inoichi said, whatever happens with the teams, I want you to remember that this place, this memorial, is a testament to the relationship between the Yamanaka clan and the Nara and Akamichi clans. Papa, Ino questioned, uncharacteristically hesitant. He held up a hand, and she fell silent, we made a pact, Papa said, all three of us, that we would work together and protect Kanoha, always, my beloved little girls, one of you isn't going to be on an Ino Shikacho team. Rhea repressed a flinch, Ino shifted uneasily. But that's okay, Papa went on soothingly, no matter what happens, this memorial and everything it represents will stay here, y'all still be a part of it, we are united, us three clans, standing for Kanoha and against our enemies, do you understand? Ino and Rhea exchanged a solemn glance. Hi, Papa. Deems. Anata Chan. Rhea fussed quietly, shaking the unconscious girl gently, wake up. Uh, Rhea Chan. Hinata's eyelids lifted slowly, milky lavender eyes glazed over. 
She breathed a sigh of relief, thank goodness. A ah, wh what happened? Hinata sat up, glancing around the classroom in confusion. Oh, Rhea paused, trying to figure out if she wanted to say the words out loud, you saw something, erm, uncomfortable. Oh, Hinata breathed, and then, oh, she turned a little green. Rhea cringed slightly, yeah, watching Naruto and Sasu kiss was probably one of the most scarring scenes she had ever seen, Naruto was still kind of smoking from the beatdown from Sasuke's fangirls. Starting today, all of you are real shinobi, Hiroka sensei said, standing in front of the class, he was holding something behind him, a clipboard. But you are still genin, the hard journey that lies ahead has just started, now you will soon get missions to help the village. So today we will create three-man teams, and each team will have a jonin sensei, you will follow your sensei's instructions in order to successfully complete your missions, Iruka sensei grinned, taking out the clipboard. Rhea blinked, oh, that was, the paper that held the team placements, oh dear, she bit her lip, heart pounding. Team 1. There weren't any names she recognized in the teams that Iruka sensei called out, at least not until team 5. Team 5, Haruno Sakura, both Sakura and Ino tensed up, and Ishi Tabito, and Uoya Noriaki. Ha. Take that, forehead girl. Ino grinned smugly while Sakura rested said forehead against her desk, a cloud of doom hanging over her. Shut up, Ino, she groaned helplessly. Soon after that, it was. Okay, next is Team 7, Yamanaka Ino, Yuzumaki Naruto, the look of pure horror on Ino's face was almost amusing, almost, because Rhea was trying to assimilate the realization that her twin sister wasn't going to be on the Ino Shikacho team, after all. And she wasn't even with strangers. And it's just Sasuke. Oh, Kami-sama. Yes. Ino screamed, throwing her hands up in the air. Rhea thought she might have seen Sasuke's eyebrow twitch. See that, Sakura. Ino turned to the fuming Rosette with a smirk and a peace sign, true love prevails. Why you Sakura's face was pinker than her hair. Ino's score tied with Haruno Sakura for top Kinoichi, the Hokage explained, shall be with Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke, with Hata Kakashi as their sensei. Inoichi paled, taking a minute to think of his shy, sweet little Rhea with Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke, with an influence like Hata Kakashi and said, I'm sure Rhea will be just fine with Shikamaru and Choji. Iruka sensei, why does an outstanding shinobi, Naruto started to rant, but Rhea ignored him in favor of Hinata, whose sigh was resigned. Nah, Hinata-chan, Rhea nudged the other girl gently with her shoulder, it'll be okay. I'm not with Naruto-kun, she whispered sadly. I know, but ya'll yeah, see him around, right? We're all genin. Right. The mate, Hayuga Hinata, Inuzuka Kiba, Aburam Shino, Hiruka sensei said. They are. Hinata glanced anxiously at Kiba, who only grinned at her, and Shino, who adjusted his glasses. And Team 10, Yamanaka Rhea, Nara Shikamaru and Akimichi Choji, she had known immediately after Ino's name was called out that this would be the result, but actually hearing it. Rhea's smile was wide and bright, blue eyes shining happily, Choji grinned warmly at her, offering her a chip that she took as a shared congratulations, Shikamaru looked lazy as ever, but even he had a small smile on his face. The light glinted off their earrings. It was the most perfect, perfect scenario Rhea could have ever hoped for. By a silent agreement, Rhea, Choji, and Shikamaru met up on the rooftop after Iruka had dismissed them. As soon as the door closed behind her, Rhea let out a blissful sigh, I'm so happy, she confessed with a sweet smile. Choji grinned widely, settling down on the floor, I am too. Yeah, dealing with Ino would have been too troublesome, Shikamaru drawled, lying down with his hands behind his head. Shikakun. Rhea protested half-heartedly, too happy to be seriously offended on her sister's behalf. Yeah, yeah, just sit down, woman. She shook her head, kneeling down, I wonder what our sensei will be like, Rhea murmured as she unpacked her lunch. I just hope he's not too troublesome. Ah, Rhea blinked at her lunch, Mama knew. Eh? Choji sounded confused. Mama knew, she repeated with a somewhat exasperated smile, she packed me a few pieces of Korean barbecue and mackerel, and while Hinako sometimes packed food for her friends, she had never packed their favorites before. Taja's mouth fell open, and Shikamaru sat upright, both of them stared at her. Korean barbecue, Choji breathed eagerly. Mackerel. Shikamaru's eyes were wide. She just smiled and tossed them the two packets, Choji fell on his barbecue like a starved wolf, and Rhea was convinced that if it hadn't been too troublesome, Shikamaru would have done the same, instead, he yawned and started to munch slowly. Rhea shook her head and turned her attention back to her lunch, eyes widening upon seeing the flour pressed between two pieces of tissue paper, she took out her sealed box of yudin and whispered an ida dakamasu before digging in with chopsticks. How did your mom even know I love Korean barbecue best? Choji said after a length of comfortable silence. Rhea shrugged lightly, Mama has her ways, she might have asked your mama, though. Sneaky, Choji commented. 
Mm hmm, there was a reason Hanako had managed to catch Anoichi's eye. Ria, what's that? Shikamaru glanced at the bright yellow flower she had put off to the side. The black-eyed Susan, she replied, used to the Nara's idle interest in the flowers that Mama constantly packed into her lunches, it means encouragement. So your mom did know, huh? He sighed, falling back to cloud watch, troublesome, that means your dad probably told her then. Ria frowned a little, is that normal? Shikamaru shrugged, probably not, does it matter? Not really, she conceded, Ria assumed it was on the Ino Shikacho thing, I hope Ino's doing okay. Pursuit. Ah. Ino threw her hands in the area a few floors down, I can't find Sasu-kun anywhere. The awesome, totally cool Ichiha had run off as soon as Aruka had dismissed them, and now she cold and find him, Ino briefly considered the possibility that he was avoiding her, but quickly waved that thought away, she was sure Sasuke would be thrilled to see her. As for Naruto, well, Ino had no idea why Ria was nice to that idiot, he was such an obvious attention seeker, although with the way he was treated, she could reluctantly see why, still, his outfit was going to kill her eyes one day, it was torture to look at. But that wasn't what was important right now, what was important right now was that. Sasu-kun where are you? Asuma. Ria sat quietly at her desk, eyes wandering absently around the classroom, Hinata had gone off a few minutes ago with her teammates and a beautiful woman with red eyes, most of the other teams were gone, too, with the exception of Team 7. The door slid open a moment later, and she resisted the urge to jump nervously, a man with brown eyes, short, black spiky hair, a beard, and a cigarette in his mouth walked in, he was wearing the standard Kanoha uniform, complete with a green flak jacket and forehead protector. Team 10, he said in a warm deep voice, come with me. Biting her lip, Rhea rose out of her seat and walked down the aisle, feeling her heart pound in her chest, oh, Kami-sama, what if their sensei didn't like her? What if something happened? What if she ruined everything? Falling in next to her, Shikamaru yawning and Choji eating, the boys were a familiar comforting presence, before she stepped over the doorway, Rhea saw Ino flash her that confident bold smile and a reassuring thumbs up, her nerves settled, mostly. The Jounin leaped onto a rooftop as soon as they were outside the academy, and they obediently followed his lead as he began to roof hop, they sprinted through half of Kanoha, over Ria's flower shop and Chaja's restaurant and Shika's research facility. Their sensei led them far, far out into the outskirts of the village, way out into what Ria eventually recognized as the outlying training grounds, by now, they were tree hopping, Ria was gasping for breath, leg muscles burning, Choji was red in the face, and Shikamaru was struggling a little, too. Finally, he stopped on a clearing surrounded by trees and shrubbery on all sides, wildflowers littered the ground among bright green grass, and a warm wind blew across the expanse, rustling leaves and branches, the Jounin landed easily and turned to face them, looking as fresh as he had been when they'd started. Rhea wasn't anywhere close to that level of stamina, she gasped softly, frantically sitting down before she fell down, Shikamaru and Choji jumped to a halt on either side of her, and joined Rhea on the ground and trying to regain their breaths. It looked like they were finally ready to start. Introductions. Their sensei grinned at them, warm and friendly, all right there. I thought this might be a good place for introductions and further instruction. Troublesome, Shikamaru muttered, closing his eyes briefly. Ria did her ponytail, more than a few ringlets having come loose. Toji grabbed a bag of potato chips and started to eat. He sweat dropped, okay, it'll go first, I guess, my name is Saratobi Asuma, I like smoking, soba, and playing games, I dislike cats, debts, and asparagus, my goal is to protect Kanoha to the best of my ability, now, how about you, Shikamaru? Shikamaru sighed, expression resigned, what a drag, my name is Nara Shikamaru, I like playing shogi and sleeping, I dislike troublesome women and work, my goal is to marry an average girl and have two children before dying of old age. Asuma sensei's sweat drop became slightly more pronounced, ah okay, how about you, Ria? Ria squeaked mildly and stared at a bluebell, um, my name is Yamanaka Inori, but everyone calls me Ria, I I like gardening and flowers, I dislike, not much, my goal is to, be as strong as my papa, and as graceful as my mama. I think, she added mentally, it wasn't like she had a really concrete dream like Yuzumaki Naruto, who shouted said dream to the world every morning. From the corner of her eye, she could see Asuma Sensei nod approvingly, though he still looked exasperated with their team, they weren't exactly normal or anything, so Rhea could sorta of sympathize, great. And now, Choji. Choji munched on a chip loudly and swallowed, my name is Akamichi Choji, I like eating, especially Korean barbecue, I dislike people who call me fat, because I'm just big boned. My goal is to prove I'm a strong shinobi, too. Asuma sensei had jumped slightly at Chaja's shout, although both Shikamaru and Ria had expected it, ahem, well then, I can see that you are all very different and unique individuals, he said, blowing out a long stream of smoke, I'm afraid I have a bit of an unwelcome surprise, though. 
Rhea bit her lip, eyes wide, surprise, she didn't particularly like surprises, not even the somewhat good ones. He nodded gravely, yes, you see, every Genin team must be given a test after graduation by their Jounin sensei, in Team 10's case, that would be me. The, but didn't we already pass our graduation test Choji said, chopping furiously on potato chips. That was just to see who would have a chance at becoming Genin, Asuma sensei told them, this is the real thing, whoever fails gets sent back to the academy, no pressure, though. Troublesome, Shikamaru muttered, brow furrowing, when is this test going to be? Calm down, grasshopper, I'm getting there, Asuma sensei said, ignoring Shikamaru's eyebrow which and Rhea's giggles, now, I'm giving you all a choice, we can have the test right here, right now, or we can do it tomorrow at the break of dawn, what do you say? On instinct, Rhea glanced toward Shikamaru, he was the one with the brains, the one who made the plans, Shikakun. Your call, Choji chimed in encouragingly. Shikamaru sighed, rubbing a hand down his face, we'll do it now, no use dragging it out. Asuma sensei grinned, got it, in that case, your test is to catch me and hold me in place for half a minute. Toji blinked, that's it. That's it. And wh when, Rhea trailed off hesitantly, but Asuma sensei seemed to get what she wanted to say. Well start in five minutes, he told her, and you guys will have one hour. Too troublesome, Shika groaned, dragging himself to his feet, come on, Rhea, Choji. Rhea was confused, hadn't their sensei said the test started in five minutes. Why were they moving now? But Choji was already getting up, and she trusted Shika Kun's word, so she got up, too, he darted off, and after a quick look at Asuma sensei his grin was still there Rhea followed. They jumped through the trees rapidly until Shikamaru jumped down, hiding behind some bushes, Rhea and Choji landed beside him, and he turned around to face them so they were in a sort of triangle. Shika Kun, Rhea whispered softly in confusion. Hush, calm down, Shikamaru ordered, closing his eyes and cupping his fingers, Rhea, meditate, Choji, eat. Naturally, Rhea still had no idea what was going on, but it was Shikakun, so she just sighed and closed her eyes as well, inhale for 7 seconds, hold for 7 seconds, exhale for 7 seconds, repeat. Her papa was the one who had originally taught her this exercise when he had realized how anxious she could get before some important event or another, but it was Shikamaru that had helped her refine it, after finding that quiet space inside of her head, Rhea began to list the one topic that was most familiar to her. Flowers. Ulstermeria, friendship, amaryllis, beauty, anemone, anticipation, anthurium, hospitality, aster, patience. And on it went. Both Rhea and Eno adored the flower shop, they had worked there since they were young, Hinako patiently teaching them the flower names and what they represented, Eno knew all of this, too, and she enjoyed the flowers and their beauty. But Rhea loved it. She was all the way at status, remembrance, when Shikamaru's familiar voice broke through her trance. All right, he said, and Rhea opened her eyes, Shikamaru had let his hands drop, and the look in his eyes, focused and determined, was familiar, if rare, Choji seemed to have eaten his way through two whole bags of potato chips, and was smiling, here's how it's going to go. Test. The Suma waited back in the original clearing, feeling pleasantly charged with anticipation, he couldn't wait to see what the next generation of the Ino Shikacho had in store for him, as a child, Asuma had grown up hearing stories about their glory, although he supposed it might be a tad unfair to project such heavy expectations on Green Genin. Admittedly, his excitement was somewhat dulled by prior information, like grades, Asuma knew better than to judge entirely by grades, but the Nara and Akamichi had both nearly been dead last of their class. The Yamanaka, Rhea, had been average, which almost made it a bit worse. And then had come their parents' words to him, the previous famed generation of the Inoshikacho, when handing him a mission report, the last advanced one in a long while, Asuma had been told from Shikaku, my son is a lazy bastard, Choza, who had been there as well, had laughed and shrugged. Inoichi, well, the blonde interrogator had tracked down Asuma and told him that he had better treat his little girl rider else, along with an entire stream of threats and death glares, needless to say, Asuma had been dearly hoping young fresh Ri Yamanaka would be too much of a hassle to handle. Finally, there were the actual introductions and impressions, Shikamaru's little tirade was strange and expected in its sheer laziness, the kid was Anara all right, it was obvious that if Asuma wanted him to do anything at all, he would have to bribe or threaten or something. Rhea was surprising and that she was far more timid than Asuma had been led to expect from Inoichi's girl, maybe that was why he was so protective. While Choji had been promising, albeit startling, Asuma made a note in his mind to never comment carelessly on the boy's weight. Their five minutes of preparation time had flown past not long ago, and he had started the clock, now, he was just waiting to see what the brat's first move would be, Asuma did hope they would hurry up though, he was growing bored, more time passed without action, and he was getting ready to seek them out when. Asuma grinned and jumped in the air, narrowly avoiding the small tendril of shadow that had snuck up behind him, nice try. 
he called, landing on his feet five meters away from his former position, a barrage of shuriken was sent after him as response, this time from his left. Not batting an eyelid, the Jounin ducked under the weapons and found his eyes locked with large blue eyes, not two feet away, Rhea raised her hands and formed a triangle with her fingers, Asuma frowned marginally, he knew the drawbacks of using that technique, and he wasn't anywhere near immobilized yet. She couldn't really be so stupid as to knock herself out of the fight this quickly, right? Apparently not. Mind-body switch technique. Rhea yelled. Sighing to himself, Asuma leapt into the air and watched with some disappointment as Rhea's body collapsed, and here he had been expecting more from Inoichi's daughter, ah well, he there was a kunai heading straight towards him, an exploding tag trailing behind it in the air. Raising an eyebrow, Asuma performed a seal less body replacement technique with a nearby log, landing lightly on a tree, he watched apathetically as his log was exploded into pieces, the heat wave from 10 feet above hitting him harmlessly. Now, time to find out where that little thing had come from. A rapid shunshun and he was standing behind a certain Akamichi, having fun, Choji. Asuma grinned. A squeal that passed Choji's lips as he jumped a foot into the area and spun around to face him, really was amusing, a Asuma sensei. He gasped, eyes wide and mouth open. Um, where is Shikamaru? He asked, glancing around him, it didn't look like the lazy Nara was anywhere close. There, I don't really know, Choji admitted. Asuma just shook his head, this team was strongly built on teamwork, and he had expected the brats to know and understand that, drawing back his foot, he aimed a kick at Choji that was, surprisingly, dodged, Choji gulped harshly, jumping back while his hand sped through seals. Multi-size technique. He announced, expanding the size of his abdomen to massive balloon-like portions, Asuma grinned, breathing out a breath of smoke, now, this was better. Human bullet tank. Tucking in his limbs, Choji turned himself into a meatball, heading straight for Asuma, better, but not enough, Choji cold and turn, cold really aim in this form, and Asuma was a jounin, this technique would be devastating should he be immobilized, but he wasn't. Leaping off the branch with a blast of chakra, Asuma briefly removed his cigarette from his lips, as Choji blindly decimated trees and shrubbery, he sighed, smoke curling in the air, geez, he had expected more from an Inoshikacho group than this, his expectations probably had been a little too high there. Landing smoothly in the middle of the clearing they had originally started out in, Asuma glanced up at the sun, he would say, the brats had around 10 minutes left, they had spent way too much time doing nothing useful, well, time to find Shikamaru, he wasn't holding out hope though. Here I go. Came a loud shout to his right, and Asuma raised his eyebrow as Choji came crashing through the row of trees, rolling forward without hesitation, persistent one, wasn't he? Still, that sort of tactic hadn't worked once, it wasn't going to work the second time. Circulating chakra to his feet, Asuma was getting ready to move when a kunai arched through the air, sadly, the aim was terrible, and he blinked when it flew two meters to his left, what was that? Was that supposed to do anything at all, a decoy perhaps? Or just bad aim? Asuma got his answer a second later, when the kunai cut a wire inconspicuously hidden by some branches, a rain of kunai fell from the sky not long later, accompanied by dozens of shuriken from the left, Choji was still coming from his right, and this was so obviously a trap to his trained, experienced mind. Asura Tobi could have avoided it. He didn't, that wasn't the purpose of this exercise. Jumping back, he deftly avoided the obstacles heading his way, and found himself unable to move. Shadow possession jutsu complete, Shikamaru declared, crouched in the shadows of the tree he had forced Asuma into, Rhea, now. Biting her lip, the Yamanaka stepped out from the tree she had hidden behind, she appeared timid, though evidently determined now to fail her teammates, Asuma glanced at the unconscious form that he had thought was Rhea, only to find that it had been replaced by a log. Huh, so, she had pretended she had knocked herself out, but it actually performed a replacement jutsu with a hinge jutsu, Asuma was somewhat impressed, that wasn't easy for a genin, taking a deep breath, Rhea raised her hands and formed a triangle. Mind-body switch technique, Rhea whispered softly, eyes fluttering closed, her falling body was quickly caught by Choji, who looked on at the scene alertly, hand hovering near his shinobi pouch. Asuma had been hit with the Yamanaka technique, most shinobi were, if only for a mental evaluation, it wasn't that the lot of them were mentally healthy, but there was a limit to how messed up you could be, before it was decided that it would interfere with normal training and missions. This was different. Rhea was barely a genin, far from an expert in using her family techniques, she wasn't trying to take him over, interrogate him for information, or utilize his body to attack, the one and only motive she had was to immobilize him for half a minute. Accordingly, it was subtle, Asuma tensed automatically as he felt her mind touch the edges of his, a foreign but not malignant contact, she pushed down on his mind, thoughtful and sweet, no real killing intent behind her actions, though her resolve didn't waver despite Asuma's apparent compliance. 
if the majority of that clan approached subduing a mind like an unmovable object that stood firmly between the victim's conscious and reality, then Rhea was an unstoppable force, her determination and strength washed over his mind in unrelenting waves, keeping him gently repressed, it was slow going, but effective. Correspondingly, it was no ten-ton hammer coming down on him mentally, rather, the feeling that crept over him was akin to slow-acting paralytic poison, sluggish and relentless, a weight that, while initially flimsy and featherlight, grew and grew until it was an anvil. Yamanaka made no move to try and completely force his conscious into hibernation or move his body, but carefully overwhelmed his mind so that he, well aware, cold and shift an inch, with him also trapped by the Nara shadow and with the Akamichi watching closely, it was the perfect combination to keep a target paralyzed. Asuma grinned inwardly, now this was more like it. Fifteen seconds, Shikamaru said, though Asuma heard his voice as if it came from a distant tunnel. Nah, I'm sorry about this, Asuma-sensei, Rhea said mentally, increasing a bit of the pressure, just in case he tried to escape upon hearing the time ticking down. Asuma didn't, that wasn't the point, don't worry about it, Rhea, he assured her with a chuckle, you're only performing the task I set up for you. Five seconds. Rhea's mind shifted uneasily, um, Asuma-sensei, do we pass now? Asuma's mental grin widened, sure you do, now, let me go, alright. Just because he endured it didn't mean he actually liked being immobilized and vulnerable. Zero, Shikamaru leaned back with a sigh, finally letting his jutsu go. Alright, at the same time, Rhea let go of her hold on Asuma's mind and snapped back to her body, she stirred with a soft moan, blue eyes slowly focusing on the outside world, Choji helped her to his feet with a warm smile. Asuma straightened up, cracking his neck nonchalantly, well, then, he stopped, letting the tension rise. Shikamaru groaned, propping himself up on his elbows, just spit it out, sensei. Yeah, Asuma-sensei, how did we do? Choji chimed in, plopping himself on the ground. Rhea said nothing, but collapsed to her knees with a weary sigh. Asuma grinned widely, sticking his hands in his pockets, you guys pass. From here on out, we're officially Team 10. Shikamaru let himself fall back down with another heartfelt groan, finally, so troublesome. Oh, thank Kami-sama, Rhea breathed, shoulders falling with relief. Does that mean we can get dinner now Choji wanted to know. Asuma could only sweat drop, geez, what have I gotten myself into. I'm home. Rhea called out softly as she stepped into the house, slipping off her shoes, she turned halfway to wave goodbye to Shikamaru, who had walked her home after Asuma's test, he waved back before strolling away casually for his own house. Welcome home, Hanako called back, somewhere in the kitchen. Rhea. There you are. A yellow and purple blur sped down the stairs, the sound of a slam door echoing behind her, Eno swept her twin up in a warm hug, smile bright and blue eyes twinkling, her answering smile on her lips, Rhea hugged her back tightly, she had missed her sister. Eno's been home since six, Mama said, standing in the kitchen doorway in a white apron and holding a spatula in her hand, her brown eyes were welcoming, her smile small and proud, we were wondering what's keeping you, Rhea, it was almost eight by now. Ah, Asuma-sensei had us do a test, Rhea explained, cringing slightly at the memory of the fight, she had panicked the entire time, torn between believing in Shika-kun's genius and Choji-kun's strength, and mentally going over the many, many, many ways Asuma-sensei could beat them into the ground. He was a Jounin, after all, and they were only Jenin, barely Jenin, for that matter. Really Eno exclaimed, pulling back to lead her by the hand to a seat at the table, my lazy bum of a sensei has us taking a test tomorrow. Ah, Rhea blinked, curling up on her seat, who is your sensei anyways? Ada Kakashi, Ino rolled her eyes, tossing back her hair, don't ask me to tell you anything more about him, because he didn't say, just sported out a whole bunch of nonsense when we were supposed to introduce ourselves. So he didn't give up any information. She reiterated hesitantly, that sounded an awful lot like what Papa repeatedly told them to do. I know what you're thinking, Rhea, but I'm telling you, that's not it. Kami-sama, that man fell for Naruto's stupid eraser trick. Can you believe that he fell for a stupid genin prank? Plus, he was four hours late and read porn right in front of us. Ino ranted, eyes glinting angrily, porn, Rhea. Oh oh, Rhea's eyes went wide, her cheeks flushing a pale pink, I see, so Hess giving you a test tomorrow. She said, quickly changing the topic before Ino could truly go on a roll. Yeah, she inspected her manicured nails idly before grabbing hold of Rhea's hand to inspect hers, it's going to be really early, too, Kakashi-sensei better not be late. I won't count on that, Ino, Hinako warned with a laugh as she moved the broccoli around her pan, Kakashi-san is very, very well known for his tardiness. Ino groaned, head lolling back, great, just great, well, how about you, Rhea? Your sensei must be better, right? I guess so, Rhea responded with a small shrug, Asuma sensei seems nice. Wait, you said you had a test, Ino bolted upright, staring at her sister intently, you passed, right? 
you must have passed. Mm hmm, she nodded, a glimmer of pride in her eyes, we passed. Well, don't leave me hanging. Ino insisted, turning so she faced Rhea, tell me everything that happened. Rhea laughed softly, leaning back, well, first Asuma Sensei brought us to this training ground. Safe. Later that night, the sun long gone over the horizon, Inoichi came home, his youngest daughter was asleep on the couch, an open book on the blanket spread across her lap and legs, Hinako came to greet him at the door with a kiss to the cheek. She passed, she said to him quietly, smile radiant in that subtle, lovely way that Inoichi had fallen in love with. Inoichi grinned, I know. Ino Hinako bought up, a strain of worry crossing her face, but Inoichi shook his head, pressing a finger to her full lips. Ino will be fine, he assured her, moving across the room with silent steps to kneel at his daughter's side, Inoichi gently brushed a strand of pale blonde hair from Rhea's face, face softening. Inoichi, Hinako knelt down beside him, lines of unusual stress on her forehead, they're Jen and now. I know, Hinako, Inoichi said, hand clenching, I know, now, his beloved daughters were legally adults, officially ninja, he couldn't shield them from that bloody cruel world anymore, they needed to navigate it on their own. Shaking her head, Hinako said, Yao'd better get Rhea upstairs, Asuma Sen will probably have her doing missions tomorrow. Yeah, picking her up smoothly she was still so light in his arms, so young and innocent Inoichi steadily made his ways up the stairs and placed in her bed, she stirred a bit when he pulled the blankets over her, but calmed when he placed a light kiss on her forehead. Be safe, little Jasmine. Startle. The next morning, when Rhea woke up mysteriously, in her bed, she was pretty sure she hadn't gone to sleep last night there Ino was already gone, but then, hadn't her twin said that her training would take place very, very early in the morning. I hope her sensei isn't late again, Rhea mused to her reflection, frowning at the mess of blonde curls and ringlets she was greeted with, she sighed, normally, Ino was the one who had to deal with her naughty hair, but her twin wasn't here today. Making a face, Rhea grabbed the hairbrush and forcibly dragging it through her hair, wincing and cringing, ten long, painful minutes later, her hair was in a high ponytail, and she was running out the door, an omelette stuffed in her mouth, bye mama. Bye Rhea. Have a good day, sweetheart, Hinako called back encouragingly. Moving smoothly down the bustling streets of Kanoha, Rhea made her way to the training center and wondered what they were going to be doing today, some training, perhaps. While she didn't like training, she recognized that it was necessary anyhow. Appa had said that they would start missions soon, but even though all ninjas took missions, she hoped that they wouldn't be too hard, because what if she would did something wrong someone might get hurt, or, Kami-sama, what if? Rhea arrived onto the training grounds to find Shikamaru flat on his back on the ground, hands behind his back, eyes staring straight up at the sky, it didn't look like Choji was here, yet, at this time, he was probably finishing his massive breakfast. Good morning, Shikakun, Rhea exhaled heavily, sinking to her knees beside him, despite the cool, fresh air of the early morning, the lightheadedness that blurred the world around her, was similar to if she had been sprinting, her heart pounded heavily against her chest. Dark eyes shifted a fraction to look at her lazily, morning, a pause as she tried to regain her breath, it's too early for you to stress, Rhea. You know me too well, she said, smiling sheepishly. Of course I do, Shikamaru yawned widely, a few sleepy tears springing to his eyes, don't tell me you are worried about the missions. There. Rhea. I'm sorry. But, what if something happens, her brow wrinkled in her anxiety, her hands instinctively reaching for each other and twisting restlessly. Shikamaru gazed at her, taking in the honest concern churning dark and cornflower blue eyes, and grumbled half-heartedly, Rhea, things are always going to go wrong, what matters is how you react to it. I panic, she pointed out the obvious dryly. He rolled his eyes, yeah, but me and Choji will be there with you, so it'll be fine, so simple, so easy, but Rhea couldn't deny his logic, she never really could. Rhea worried her bottom lip between her teeth, I guess. Before Shikamaru could respond, a familiar voice rang through the clearing, putting their conversation on hold. Good morning, guys, Choji greeted as he trotted in, a wide smile on his face. Rhea lit up, a matching smile tilting her lips, good morning, Choji-kun, how are you? Good, Choji plopped himself down on Shikamaru's other side, casting a look around their surroundings, where's Asuma-sensei? Dear, came the unexpected answer from behind Rhea, and she gasped, instinctively jumping to her feet and whirling around in surprise, Shikamaru tensed, head snapping to the side, while Choji's eyes widened, and he half got to his feet. Asuma-sensei grinned at them, standing five feet away from Rhea, hands tucked casually in his pockets and a cigarette hanging from his mouth, hey, guys. Asuma-sensei, you scared me, Rhea scolded lightly, sinking back down with a hand over her rapidly thumping heart. He chuckled, grabbing his cigarette between two fingers, sorry. Are we going to be doing missions today, sensei? Choji asked, settling down as well. Yeah, but not yet, Asuma-sensei hunched down, breathing out a stream of smoke, I want you all to do an exercise. 
An exercise. Shikamer repeated warily, ticking up an eyebrow. Right, you guys up for it. Um, sure. Rhea said hesitantly. Doji shrugged, okay. Troublesome, Shikamaru groaned. Asuma-sensei sweat dropped, okay then. What would you like us to do, Asuma-sensei? Rhea prompted, feeling slightly bad for the man, they probably weren't what he was expecting, at all. I want you to introduce your teammates to each other, he said with a sly grin. Startled, Rhea, Choji, and Shikamaru exchanged glances. Introduce each other to each other. Choji frowned, brow furrowing. Asuma-sensei nodded, yeah, good points, bad points, everything, hmm, Shikamaru, why don't you go first? Introductions Part 2. What a drag, making a disgruntled face, Shikamaru pushed himself up into a sitting position, gazing at his two teammates with heavy-lidded eyes, they blinked back at him, Rhea uncertainly and Choji bemusedly, both seeming rather confused as to why they needed to perform this exercise. Then, he flicked a gaze at a nonchalant Asuma and wondered if the Jonin was trying to clear the air, so to speak, expose any vendettas before it had a chance to do extensive damage, if so, he was going to be disappointed, they were childhood friends, best friends, there was very little Shikamari didn't know about Rhea and Choji, and vice versa. Fine, Rhea, you're the least troublesome female I know, you don't nag, you don't scream, but you do have a bad tendency to fret and fuss, some things you just can't control, woman, stop worrying about it, Rhea smiled sheepishly, but didn't refute his conclusion, not that he ever thought she would. He shifted his attention to his other teammate, Choji, out of everyone, you're the kindest, don't listen to all the morons who comment on your appearance, careful with the eating though, might get in the way during missions and all that, Choji nodded, positively beaming at the praise. Thank you, Shikamaru, Asuma said easily, a thoughtful look in his eyes, Rhea. Rhea bit her lip, tugging at an errant blonde ringlet considerately, you um, Shikakun, you're very smart, but you're kinda lazy, too, so most of the time you don't do anything with your brain cause it's too troublesome, Shikamaru smirked, unrepentant, it was true, after all. Doji-kun, you're nice, and caring, hmm, maybe work on your self-confidence a little more. Rhea offered hesitantly, I'm sure you'll become a great shinobi, you don't have to doubt yourself, Choji frowned considerately, but nodded, a determined set to his mouth. All right, Choji. Asuma prompted. Choji grinned, face lighting up, okay. Shikamaru, you're my best friend and I think you're great. No one ever beats you at shogi, you like to give up, though, in a fight, that probably be a problem or something, Shikamaru sighed, but accepted the judgment as the truth. Rhea-chan, you're really sweet, you always make pretty flower arrangements, Rhea blushed bright red, but there was a pleased smile on her lips, you should totally eat more, though, by the way, mama wants us all to come over for dinner tomorrow, Choji remembered. Hey, why not? Shikamaru shrugged. The last papa, Rhea assured him. Choji glanced at Asuma, who pointed at himself in a me too. Gesture, when he nodded enthusiastically, the Jounin grinned warmly, it'll be there, Choji, looks like everyone's done, you guys are best friends, aren't you? He had the tone of someone who had been told the truth, but hadn't believed it. The three of them blinked up at him, exchanging looks, from the slight crease of Rhea's forehead and Chaja's frown, Shikamaru gathered that they hadn't realized that it was beyond rare for friends, much less best friends to be paired up in a single team, three best friends altogether was the stuff of miracles, but that was the strength of the Ino Shikacho combination in the first place. In fact, if he had to guess, Shikamaru would say that that was why they had eventually decided on Rhea being placed on the team instead of Ino, who was the actual heir to the Yamanaka clan when push came to shove, teamwork was the bedrock of Konoha, but for Team 10, it would be most everything, he supposed he couldn't be surprised that Asuma had expected them to be at odds. Of course, Shikamaru said, yawning widely, geez, it wasn't even noon yet, and he wanted to take a nap. Since the academy. Rhea added shyly. Yeah. Choji gave their sensei a thumbs up. Asuma shook his head, but it wasn't in disapproval, well, I'm sure that'll work to our advantage later on, now, it's time for some missions. Oh, Rhea shifted, no doubt starting to worry again. Toji grabbed a bag of chips and started to eat. Shikamaru made a face, this was so, troublesome. He ranks. Hey, Asuma-sensei. Shikamaru called as he scrutinized their list with a scowl. Yeah. The older man walked behind them, hand in his pocket and cigarette in his mouth. Does this honestly count as a mission? Choji asked bluntly, staring blankly at the bags of groceries he carried, as it turned out, he was responsible for carrying the bags, while Shikamaru made sure they had everything they needed, and Rhea picked out the best produce. It does seem a bit mundane, Rhea agreed, biting her lip lightly. Asuma chuckled, blowing out a breath of smoke, that's D-ranks for you, hella boring, but they have to be done. And we have to do them as fresh genin. Shikamaru deadpanned, crossing off carrots from his list. Yeah, sucks to be you guys, I guess, he smiled when he said it though, tone sympathetic. 
Um, does it actually do anything other than get the chores done? Ria wanted to know. Asuma hummed thoughtfully, actually, yes. What? Choji scratched the back of his neck. The D ranks are meant to improve your teamwork, otherwise smooth out any jinx in the team and make your status as a genin well known in the village, he explained, sorta like helping you gain street cred. Ooh, Choji nodded in understanding. Radish's next, Shikamaru muttered. Those are on the other side of the market, Rhea said. What a drag. Bells. I'm home. Rhea called out with a sigh as she kicked off her shoes, Team 10 hadn't gotten many D ranks done 3, but she was still tired, maybe that meant she should work on her stamina. Rhea. A blonde blur zoomed out of the kitchen to collide with her, Eno grinned widely, blue eyes sparkling, I passed, I passed. Oh. Grinning back, Rhea pulled her twin into a hug, congratulations. Thanks, Eno giggled, grabbing her hand to pull her into the kitchen where their mama was already getting ingredients ready for dinner, come on, it'll tell you all about it. Welcome home, Rhea, Hanako greeted evenly, peeling the cucumber she held in her hands with graceful movements, Eno's been itching to tell you about her test for two hours. Eno stuck her tongue out childishly at her, mama. Hi, hi, tell your story. Eno humphed, tossing back her hair, taking a seat at the table and patting the seat next to her until Rhea sat down, too, she said, so, we had a different test than you did. What was it? We had to take a bell from Kakashi-sensei. A bell? Yeah, he had two bells and to pass, we had to have a bell at hand when the timer rang, Eno's mouth twisted in dislike, can you believe it, Rhea he was late. Again. And this time, it was way more than three hours. Rhea winced, Eno was not known for her patience, two bells. She prompted, hoping to change the topic before her twin could go into a full-fledged rant, but it's a three-man team. Mm -hmm, Eno nodded fiercely, a smug smile spreading across her lips, it was a teamwork exercise, I figured it out first, and then she deflated abruptly, but Sasu kun won't listen to me. Ah, you um, what about Naruto? She was pretty sure the blonde was nicer than Sasuke. He was too busy thinking about food, oh, but he was kind of not smart, too, anyway, so we split up, and then Kakashi-sensei sprung a terrible jinjutsu on me, Rhea. Really? It couldn't be that bad, could it? What was it about? Ino shuddered, making a pained face, it was Sasuke-kun, but he was all bloodied, and shuriken and kunai were stuck all over him. And he couldn't stand and it looked like he was dying, dying, Rhea. It was dreadful. Oh, B but you got out, right? Rhea didn't think she wanted to witness a jinjutsu like that with Shika-kun or Choji-kun, it would probably be awful. Of course I did. Ino huffed, throwing her hair back, Papa taught us how to break out of jinjutsu when we were ten, remember? Mm -hmm. the thing was, no matter how much the academy might preach otherwise to civilian parents, clan-born children always had an advantage, their parents, relatives taught them about chakra, jutsu, combat since they were able to walk, being the daughters of Inoichi, meant that Ino and Rhea knew how to spot the liars and deceivers, how to lie and trick others without a single telling sign. More than that, clan-born children were, almost unnoticeably, favored by the system, it was why Ino had been chosen over Sakura for Team 7, not that the two girls knew that. What happened after that? Rhea asked curiously. Well, I dispelled the Jinjutsu, right? Then, Kakashi-sensei showed up again and I tried to kick him, but he jumped out of the way, now, if I had been able to hit him with my mind transfer jutsu everything would be fine then, but Nuo, Naruto and Sasuke-kun just had to be stubborn and proud, so, Kakashi-sensei ended up trapping me in an earth jutsu, Ino pouted, crossing her arms. An earth jutsu? Yeah, he pulled me down up to my neck into the ground, her twin scowled in disgust, it was disgusting. I made sure to take a shower as soon as I got home. Rhea giggled, that was Eno for you, how did you get out? I didn't, she sighed tragically, Naruto had to dig me out after the timer rang, a heavy cloud of doom appeared over her head, I had to get rescued by Naruto, why cold did have been Sasuke-kun? They ah, Rhea decided to ignore the Sasu comment as she had been doing for the past few years and move on, if you didn't get the bells, how'd you pass? Eno perked up, diving right back into storytelling mode, right I was surprised, too. So, after we all came back to where we started, Naruto got tied to a stump cause he was such an idiot, you know, but then Kakashi-sensei gave us these bentos and told them that we could have a second chance, so long as we didn't give any to Naruto. It was obviously another test, so I gave a bite to Naruto as soon as sensei left, oh, and Sasuke-kun did, too. He was so cool, Eno obtained a dreamy look on her face, eyes staring into the far-off distance. Rhea sweat dropped, raising a hand to wave back and forth before Eno's eyes, Eno, Eno. She jolted, snapped out of whatever daydream she was having, huh what? Here. Rhea laughed, a small smile tugging at her lips, you didn't finish your story, did your sensei find out you were breaking his rules? Oh, yeah. 
Eno nodded enthusiastically, grinning, but it was a total scam, like I thought, and then he said something like, those who break the rules are scum, but those that abandon their friends are worse than scum, it was really cool, even though I already knew that. Stars twinkled around her briefly. Bria nodded in understanding, even though Eno didn't end up on the Eno Shikacho team, they had had teamwork beaten into their skulls since birth, it came as easy as breathing, and then he passed you guys. Mm hmm, it was great. Though Sasu kun didn't want to have dinner with me. Bria laughed warmly and hugged her sister, well, I'm glad that you passed, Sasu Kurnot, you're starting missions tomorrow. Yeah. You already had some today, right? Eno pulled away to pin her with an inquisitive look, how did they go? Um, well, Rhea smiled ruefully, they were really boring actually. The Eno seemed at a loss for words before puffing out a breath, and here I thought they would be fun. Yeah, no, she shook her head before turning to Hanako, who was just about done with dinner, mama. Choji kun's mama wants me over for dinner tomorrow. That's fine, honey, Hanako assured her, plating the food, but make sure to let your papa know. MMK. Eno grinned widely and tugged lightly at her left earring, well, we both passed and that's a thing to celebrate, right? Bria looked cautiously at the glint of mischief in her twin's eyes, right? Right. So we should totally have pudding for dessert tonight. Eno turned pleading eyes their mama's way, who laughed fondly. Hi, hi. Yes. Eno threw her hands in the air and grabbed Rhea's hand, come on. Let's make the pudding. 